welcome to Lima Bean Living. Today's video is kind of gonna be a super long video of like all of my party preps to date. And if you guys haven't checked out this video up above, it kind of explains why I'm posting marathon videos right now instead of a bunch of new content. And while the quality of some of these like clips isn't ideal, I still think that these party prep ideas and uh, recipes, I think they're still worth sharing, whether or not it's a little blurry. So I hope you guys can be forgiving of that, but I do hope you guys enjoy all of these party preps that I've done so far and that it motivates you guys to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already so that you don't miss any future party planning videos that I do. Enjoy! Hey there, welcome back to Lima Bean Living. If you guys are new here, my name is Emily, and in today's video, I am prepping for my daughter's second birthday party. She loves rocks, and so I decided to go with a rock-themed party. As you can see here, I'm just kind of categorizing and organizing all of the things that I made in advance, which will be coming up in a future video. I will be sharing how I did a bunch of different DIYs that made my life a whole lot easier the night before and the day of the party. So I wanted to do some rock painting activities. I found some fun rock books up in my parents' library and I had some little treats that were rock themed. I also did a DIY stone. So there's a little mystery gift inside each of those and you guys will get to see some footage in a future video of the rocks actually being used and then I had some other little giveaways that I had prepared in the prior weeks. So here I am blowing up a lot of balloons. Juan actually helped me, otherwise it would have taken me like five years to do this. And I created these really cute towers. So the way that you actually create this is pretty easy. The first thing you wanna do is you wanna take two balloons and tie them together. And then you wanna do that one more time and once you have your two sets of two balloons, you want to twist them together so that they become like a little four leaf clover type shape. Once you have as many of those as you want, I think I stacked about eight on top of each other, you're gonna secure it with a weight. Uh, in this case, for my second stand, I didn't have an additional just regular balloon weight, and so I just used a can of sweetened condensed milk that had a little tab that I could tie a string onto. And what you do is you stack one four leaf clover on top of the next and you just kind of wrap the rope or the yarn or whatever ribbon you're using kind of around the balloons, securing it to one another. And that way the balloons will stand kind of firmly on top of one another without toppling over. Again, once you stack up as many of these as you want, one on top of the next, using the yarn or the ribbon to kind of secure each level to the previous level, you can, if you want, have one balloon kind of at the very top. This could be a similar balloon to what you used like I did, or if you have like the number two balloon or a special birthday balloon, you could secure that to the top as well. But I just used one of the balloons that we got from the Dollar Tree and I tied it to the end of the yarn that I was using just to kind of give this a rounded off look. Now I am 5'9", so these towers were probably about six feet tall. And that was again with eight little four leaf clovers of balloons stacked on top of each other. I also tied some balloons to a piece of yarn and secured those balloons up top to kind of connect the two balloon towers as you're looking at my birthday display. These balloons I actually got from the Dollar Tree. The marble ones came in a pack of 10 and the solid colored ones came in a pack of 15. So this was a really great find from the Dollar Tree. and for the $6 worth of balloons and then the $2 worth of plastic tablecloths that you guys can see uh, that I prepared in advance and hung up in advance. For $8, this really gave our little birthday party an over the top look and that was exactly what I was going for. Then I kind of just tried to place things around the table, kind of getting a feel for the right flow for the table, for the snacks and the little treats and the giveaways and the activities. I wanted everything to kind of 
fit together nicely and not seem too crowded. I ended up not using some of the glass bowls that I had taken out, and you guys will see that later on in the video. As you can see, there was still a lot of work to do in the kitchen, but I decided to kind of leave that for the next day and go and set up our extra table in our dining room. I topped off the table decorations with some of my homemade confetti, as well as these little egg geodes that I made in the weeks prior to the party. And if you want to figure out how I made these for pretty cheap, make sure to subscribe. It will be in a future video. So here we're at the next day. It's the day of the party. Our party was going to start at 3 p.m. So I did have a good amount of time in the morning to kind of finish getting ready. I prepared the strawberries and all of the fresh foods that we were going to be eating that day, uh, the morning of. I decided to go with meatball subs. I thought that we could call them like boulders in lava. I really wanted to go with this rock theme. And so we were just doing the crock pot for this. This made the main course really easy and stress free for that day. The other major thing that was like my key priority the day of the party was to decorate my cake. Now I had prepared the cake and the frosting in advance, but I saved the cake decorating until the day of because we didn't have too much refrigerator space and I wanted to make sure that this cake was cool the day of the party. And so this was like my main attraction, my main worry for that morning, just to make sure that, you know, my first time doing a geode cake turned out to be a success, and I hope that you guys will like the final product. My family and I really loved the taste of this cake, and I will be sharing all of the details that you guys need to know to make the cake, as well as the super easy buttercream in a future video. So again, if you want that info, make sure you subscribe and stick around so that you don't miss it. I then put the cake in the fridge to kind of firm up and firm up that crumb coat and decided to move on to preparing our Brussels sprouts. Now I originally wanted Brussels sprouts because they were round and you know needed a vegetable for our main course, but I ended up cutting them up because some of them were quite large. So we went ahead and just nicknamed these guys Jade since that is a green stone to kind of fit with our rock theme. Now I really love roasted Brussels sprouts. Funny story, when I was little, I would actually trade my dessert for my dad's Brussels sprouts, and then I went through a long phase of hating them. But now I like them again, and I love them roasted, so I drizzle on some vegetable oil, and then salt and pepper, and then roast them in the oven for about 15 minutes at like 400 degrees, and it goes very well with ranch. So this was a hit for some people. A lot of my other family doesn't really like vegetables anyways, so. Uh, it was just a healthy option with all of the other junk food that I had prepared. The other last minute kind of setup was some of our food that I had prepared in advance that needed to be cool. So I made some chocolate covered Rice Krispie treats to kind of look like Shelly Limestone. And I prepared some Jolly Ranchers to look like some agate or some like geode kind of cutouts. And so that was kind of put out towards the last minute as well as some toffee that was in the freezer that I had made in the previous weeks. By that time, the creme coat on my cake had firmed up, and so it was time to add the final layer of frosting as well as the decorations of the cake. I was actually really proud of how this final product turned out, especially since I didn't have my more elaborate cake decorating supplies. Um, I didn't have an offset spatula, so I used like a serrated bread knife because it was just long and straight and like I said I'm really proud of how this turned out I think that it was a pretty smooth finish for the buttercream and that was all that I was hoping for my geode decoration I think turned out okay in the future if I wanted to give it an even higher end look I would probably get some like liquid edible gold to kind of decorate the edges of the geode decoration but I had to work with what I had and I think I made it work. I went ahead and finished off the cake with a homemade topper that I had DIY'd a couple days in advance and I also used two candles from a pack that I got from the Dollar Tree. 
I want to thank you for joining me on this little journey. As you guys could probably tell, my little two-day setup had a lot going on, but it would have been a whole lot worse had I not prepared tons of stuff in advance. And so that is what next week's videos are going to be all about. I am going to share with you guys my DIYs, my little gifts for the kiddos that are going to come and celebrate with Aubrey, as well as a lot of the decorations that I made. And then I'm also going to walk you through all of the food that I prepped in advance, all of the little treats. And then, as I mentioned, the cake will be its own separate video because it deserves all of the attention just for itself. If you guys like this video, I would love for you to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you guys are new. I'd love to have you stick around and I will catch you in the next one. Hey there, welcome back to Lima Bean Living. In today's video, I will be sharing all of the food that I prepped ahead of time in anticipation of my daughter's second birthday party. She loves rocks, so I tried my best to make sure everything I made fit the rock theme. So if you want ideas for your own rock party or just want some delicious recipes, keep watching. The first recipe we are going to prepare is a staple in our home. We call it toffee, but others often call it Christmas crack. First, you want to preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and line up some baking sheets with some foil. Make sure that the sheets have raised edges. I am making a triple batch here, so keep in mind as you're watching, I'm making a lot. For one batch, you will need one tube of saltines, one cup of butter, one cup of brown sugar, and around 12 ounces of chocolate chips, but measure with your heart on that one. Create one layer of saltines on the foil, and then melt the butter on the stove with the brown sugar. I like to kind of wait until most of the butter has melted before adding the brown sugar. Let the mixture boil for three minutes and then remove from the heat and pour on top of the saltines. Spread the mixture to the sides of the pan and bake this in the oven for five minutes. Be careful, these pans will be hot even though they haven't been in the oven yet. After five minutes, the mixture should have a bunch of little bubbles and should look something like this. Take the tray out of the oven and sprinkle on your chocolate chips. Usually I would just use semi-sweet chocolate chips, but going with the rock theme, I wanted to give this toffee a marbled look, so I added a lot of white chocolate chips on one of the trays. For the second tray, I really should have melted the little white chocolate I used separate and then drizzled it on at the end because it really didn't show up and it just didn't have the final look I was going for but it was still delicious and that is really all that matters. Once you are done spreading out the chocolate, place the trays in your freezer for at least a few hours and then they will be ready to break apart. Store in the freezer until you're ready to eat. Next, we are going to make some chocolate Rice Krispie treats. On the stove, I melted six tablespoons of butter and added about 16 ounces of marshmallows and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. It had been years since I made Rice Krispies from scratch and I thought the mixture would have melted down a little bit quicker, so I got impatient and transferred the mixture to a bowl and microwaved it until it became a more workable texture. Then I let Juan mix as I poured in six cups of chocolate Rice Krispie cereal and some white chocolate chips towards the end. Once the mixture was well incorporated, I buttered my hands and made one and a half inch balls. Buttering your hands actually helps keep the mixture from sticking to you, so it, you know, it helps you out a lot. Then I gave the balls a Shelly Limestone finish. Let me show you how it's done. I used some melting chocolate and followed the instructions on the container to melt it to a smooth consistency. Then I used a popsicle stick to hold the Rice Krispie ball in place as I covered it in the melting chocolate. If you wanted, you could use a fork here, really anything would work. As I got to the end of the container, I added in some of my white chocolate chips and some creamer and I melted it and mixed until smooth. If you find that it's kind of like lumpy, consider adding some more chocolate chips in. White chocolate, I guess, tempers at a different temperature and so if it's really lumpy, you actually need to cool the chocolate down. It sounds weird, but it worked for me. This concoction didn't firm up the same as the melting chocolates and had to be kind of painted on the Rice Krispies, but it still did its job. 
Since I ran out of the pink chocolate towards the end, I decided just to leave some of the Rice Krispie treats alone in case anyone didn't want the extra calories. Then I put the treats in the fridge to harden and once firm, placed them in a bowl and sprayed them with this edible silver paint. This container was a little too small to cover all of the treats, but I tried to get the most out of it and even spun the treats in the bowl to pick up all of the color that got on the bowl and not on the desserts. These were very sweet, but a big hit with my sweet tooth family. Next, we are going to make sugar crystals. You are going to need two cups of water, six cups of sugar, food coloring, popsicle sticks or string, something to suspend your stick or string, cups that can withstand heat and flavoring if you choose. I did not use flavoring in this case. I first prepared the cups by tying two popsicle sticks together in the shape of a cross with a little rubber band. You want the stick to be suspended in the cup at least a half inch from the bottom. Later I noticed I needed to add more stability to these horizontal stick concoctions, so I added two more popsicle sticks on either side, again attaching with rubber bands. You will see my creation in a bit. Once all of the cups are prepared, you want to boil the sugar and water over medium high heat until all of the sugar has dissolved and looks something like this. Then you want to pour the mixture in the cup and choose your coloring and or flavor. I made these crystals about two weeks before the party because my sister's family was over for dinner and I decided to let her kids participate in personalizing their birthday favor by choosing the color of their crystals. I would suggest adding at least four drops of food coloring to each cup as the final result is a very soft and subtle color. Here you can see how I made the popsicle stick crosses more stable. Without the additional sticks, the vertical stick would kind of sway in the sugar mixture and not stand up straight. Make sure you cover the tops of the cups to avoid dust getting on the crystals. The next day, crystals had already begun to form and after a week, they had formed completely. In my experience, crystals formed on the popsicle stick as well as the sides and bottom of the cup and the top of the mixture, so they were pretty much everywhere. Getting all of these crystals out of the cup was a challenge. I first used a knife to crack the top layer and pull out the stick. Then I had to scrape the sides of the cup and scoop out as many crystals as I could. Getting the bottom layer out was the hardest. I tried soaking the cup in hot water to loosen the sugar kind of from the outside in but that method didn't really help me. So I filled the cup with a little bit of water and microwaved it for 10 to 30 seconds, and then used a knife to wedge in between the sugar and the cup, and eventually the bottom popped out. I placed the crystal popsicle stick along with the stray crystals in a little baggie to give out the day of the party. I also want to note that I labeled each kid's stick with their initial, so it would be easy to tell which crystals belonged to which kid. Next, I modified Jolly Ranchers to look like agate or geodes to fit the rock party theme. I first began by creating the number two by laying out seven Jolly Ranchers in the shape of a two on a cookie sheet covered in parchment paper. I also crushed two Jolly Ranchers of a different color for additional decoration. I baked the candy at 300 degrees Fahrenheit for about four to six minutes until it had fully melted. The cook time slightly varied based on the flavor of the candy, which is something that surprised me. Once out of the oven, you have to work a little fast. I placed the crushed candy on top of the number two and used a toothpick to clean up the edges of the number. Next, I crushed the rest of the Jolly Ranchers and arranged them in circles. I tried to have at least two colors per decorative candy to give it a little bit more dimension. Again, I used a toothpick to kind of clean up the edges and fill in the holes while the candy was still hot and moldable. I do want to note that these candies were still very sticky after they had hardened up. So you want to make sure you store them with parchment paper separating each piece. And you might want to display them by hanging them with a string or some other method so that they don't stick to each other or the plate that they're on. Unfortunately, that's what I did and it was just really hard to enjoy them the day of the party. Finally, I want to give you a little preview of me preparing the cake and the frosting. Here, I am having to make an extra batch of cake because I realized that my first batch just wasn't going to be resulting in a cake as tall as I wanted. 
I really should have just made a double batch from the start, so you live and you learn. I did this days before the party and even froze my cakes after covering them in a simple syrup. This step could have been done weeks in advance if you want. I also prepared the filling and the buttercream frosting days in advance too so that my life would be easier as the party approached. The recipe and instructions for this delicious cake will be in a future video, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. I would love for you to stick around, and please don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up, and I will catch you in the next one. Hey there, welcome back to Lima Bean Living. In today's video, I will be sharing all of the rock-themed DIYs that I prepped ahead of time in anticipation of my daughter's second birthday party. We will be making birthday activities, favors, decorations, cake toppers, and even a shirt for Aubrey. So if you want some ideas for your own rock party or just want to appreciate all of my hard work, keep watching. So the very first DIY that we are going to do is going to be making egg geodes. Now this calls for Epsom salt and first thing I got to show you is the package that my mom had on hand was expired in 1988. I thought this was hilarious. The box wasn't even opened. And honestly, looking back, I probably could have used it. It looked just the same as the new bag of Epsom salt that we purchased, but you know, you live and you learn. So anyways, the first thing you wanna do is you want to collect as many eggshells as possible and have like the larger half saved. Rinse them out and we're gonna take out the little membrane. And I don't know about you, but being able to pull off all of that membrane, at least if I could get it in one piece, was very satisfying. So once that is done, we are going to kind of discard the membrane and set these eggshells aside to dry. Once they are dry, and again, I collected these over the span of maybe like a couple weeks because I knew I wanted to make this in advance, we're gonna cover the inside with some Mod Podge, which is just like a mixture of glue and water but you could probably use white glue if that is what you have on hand. Once the inside of the egg is thoroughly coated, we are going to sprinkle in some Epsom salt and just make sure that it covers the entire part that is glued. So I kind of did a little transfer from one eggshell to the next, just to make sure that all of the edges got covered with these Epsom salts. And once you have completed as many eggs as possible or as many eggs as you want, we are going to set these guys aside to just thoroughly dry. Once your eggs have dried completely, it is time for the next step. Now, depending on how many eggs you are making, your measurements are gonna change here. But for me, because I was making a lot, I decided to boil two cups of water and then once it started to boil, I turned off the heat and added in one cup of Epsom salt. Once that was thoroughly dissolved, I added a little bit of Epsom salt continually until the mixture was very thick and the salt really wasn't dissolving anymore. This is what you want because eventually this mixture will crystallize inside of your eggs. So while this mixture is cooling, what I would suggest if you guys have a little egg carton or something to kind of hold your eggs upright, I would go ahead and line that with some saran wrap and then place your eggs inside. And then once the mixture is cool, we are going to fill each of these eggs with our little salt water mixture. Then it is the fun part. We are going to color these eggs. And I pretty much did one drop of food coloring inside each of these eggs and then just mixed it a little bit with a toothpick. Once you have colored all of your eggs and mixed it all up, you guys can set these aside and it will take a good week or two for the water to evaporate and the salt to really crystallize inside of your eggs. And as you guys can see, over the next couple of days, the water began to evaporate and we started to see more crystals forming. And by the end, there was a lot of crystals and I was really happy with the final results. Even after doing all of these eggs, I still had some salt water mixture left over. And so I decided to fill up a little cup with some Epsom salt after covering the cup in saran wrap to make my life easier later on. And I poured in the rest of the mixture. I didn't use any glue or anything like that. And the results were kind of weird. There were some crystals that kind of 
overflowed on the cup instead of filling up the cup. And I was able to use those in my next DIY. So the next DIY we are going to be doing is going to be making some surprise stones that the kiddos at the party will be able to break open and discover their little reward or surprise. Now instead of spending money on something to go in the stones, I figured, hey, maybe the kids will just like to get the money instead. And for two of the five eggs, I decided to add an extra quarter just to kind of spice it up a bit and get everyone excited to see who the two extra special winners were. So to make these surprise eggs, you're going to need one cup of flour, one cup of sand, one cup of coffee grounds, and three-fourths of a cup of salt. Now I used some regular salt and some Epsom salt because that is what I had on hand. And then we're going to mix in about a half a cup of water, little by little, until we get a good moldable consistency. Towards the end, I decided to put a plastic glove on my hand and just kind of mix it by hand because I kept noticing these little pockets of dry sand and flour mixture that just wasn't getting mixed with the water. Next, what we're going to do once we have like a very thick mud-like consistency is we are going to push our little surprise in the center and mold this kind of mixture around, kind of just trying to make it resemble a stone. Now I could have left these stones just as is, but I had some extra red sand on hand and I figured I'd just use it up or at least try to use up most of it on these little stones. So I sprinkled some on top and just kind of figured that wasn't enough, so I decided to roll the rocks in the red sand again. After adding the red sand, I figured it was still missing something and figured I would use up those salt crystals that I created with the egg geodes and just kind of shove them in these rocks. Then we go ahead and set these out to dry. Now, I noticed that mine were beginning to look like pancakes. This is because I added a little too much water. So to kind of fix the solution since I wanted stones and not pancakes, I figured I would line a cupcake pan with some saran wrap and kind of mold these stones back into a round ball and place them in the cupcake pan. Now the next day or after two days I decided to rotate these because the moisture still kind of built up at the bottom of the stone and you just kind of rotate them or set them out to dry once they get a little bit more firm so that they completely dry out. Then on the day of the party the kids go ahead and take a hammer to it or even possibly crush it by hand if they're strong enough and reveal their prize. The next decoration only cost me $2 from the Dollar Tree, but helped give the final look of the party an over-the-top feel. I picked up two plastic table covers in colors that fit our party theme and created streamers by cutting strips in the plastic, making sure to leave a little section towards the end uncut. Depending on the area you are decorating, you can cut the strips lengthwise or widthwise. In my case, I only wanted the streamers to fall at the top of our kitchen table and cover a longer portion of the wall, so I cut my table covers widthwise. This decision made it a little bit more difficult for me because I had to completely unfold and refold the table covers to make the cutting easier. If you want a ceiling to floor look, you can cut lengthwise pretty much straight out of the package, but may need to purchase more table covers depending on how wide you want your display to be. I overlapped and taped the streamers to our kitchen bay window a few days before the party to save me of additional stress the morning of. The next decoration I made for the party were these little rock labels for the snacks and food. To make the stands, I gathered some rocks and used floral wire to create the wire label holder. You just need to wrap the wire around a stone one or two times, and I kind of twisted the two ends together until I was only left with one more end, and then you want to create a few loops or some other figure at the top to secure a small sheet of cardstock. For the labels, I created a bunch of identical text boxes in a Word document with the larger font stating the rock nickname of the food and the smaller font stating what the food being served actually was. I will add all of this information down below in the description box if you want to recreate this for yourself. I printed these out and cut them out. To make my labels fancier, I used my Cricut to cut out slightly larger rectangles in cardstock to glue on the back of my printed labels. 
I'm not going to lie, these stands were a little flimsy. I think a slightly thicker wire would have been better, but I worked with what I had, and since these weren't going to be moved around a lot during the party, it wasn't that big of a deal. Next were these colorful gems that I used to decorate our kitchen table the day of the party. To make these, you will need about two foam boards from Dollar Tree, an X-Acto knife or just a sharp kitchen knife, tape or glue, and paint or markers. Essentially, we want to outline anywhere from three to six long rectangles sharing sides with identical isosceles triangles at one of the ends. For anyone who forgot what an isosceles triangle was, it is a triangle with two sides of equal length and the one side that doesn't have the equal length will be the side of the rectangle. I would recommend that these triangles be as long and pointy as possible. If you end up not liking how pointy the gem is, you can always trim down the triangles. However, it is difficult to add foam board back to the triangle if you cut off too much. If you want pointy ends on both sides of the gem and plan on laying this decoration on its side, you can draw triangles at both ends of the rectangles. After you've sketched out your rectangles and triangles, it is time to cut. With your X-Acto knife, cut the perimeter of your design all the way through the foam board. For the internal parts of your design, you are just going to score the foam board. Make sure not to cut all the way through. If you do make the mistake of cutting the board all the way through, it is not the end of the world. You will just have to tape and glue in more locations. At this point, you can assemble your gem to stand straight up. Just attach the two ends of the outer rectangles and tape the insides of the triangles together. However, if you want a slightly tilted gem, you will have to trim the bottom of the gem. To do this, locate the center rectangle. Draw a horizontal line on only this rectangle, no more than an inch above the bottom. Then draw a straight line from either end of this sketched line to the bottom corners of the entire cutout. Cut straight through these drawn lines and then assemble your gem. Again, attaching the two ends of the outer rectangles and taping the insides of the triangles together. Once the gems are assembled, you can paint or color them however you'd like. I did a little ombre effect with red, blue, and yellow. I also filled in the crevices with some glitter hot glue that they sell at the Dollar Tree. Although this step isn't necessary, I just kind of wanted to give it a over-the-top feel. Again, this was a pretty inexpensive DIY that gave the rock party an over-the-top look. Time for another easy Dollar Tree DIY. For this DIY, I used some scrap black poster board from the Dollar Tree along with some Dollar Tree glitter paper and a wall cling sticker pack. I was excited to find this sticker pack because of the sparkly gems that it had. I assembled these stickers on the poster and then used my Cricut to cut out the phrase, you are a gem from the glitter paper. And this glitter paper actually has a sticky backing so I didn't even need additional glue or tape to secure it to the sign. I contemplated having our guests write little messages to Aubrey and metallic marker on the sign but I ended up just placing it near our drink station as a decoration. Now, you have to be careful if you're using transfer tape. Mine did tear a little bit, but because it was a black poster board, it's nothing that a little Sharpie couldn't fix. I'm especially proud of this next DIY. I wanted to make Aubrey a special birthday shirt, but I didn't want it to be something that she could only wear on her birthday. Like, it's my birthday. I wanted it to be a little bit more unique than that, so to go with the rock theme, I wanted to design a shirt that said, this shirt rocks, with a rock design on the front. I picked up a blank kid shirt from Michaels weeks before the party, and then made the design on my iPad using the Procreate app. I also downloaded an image of rocks that I liked and traced the image, filling it in where I thought was necessary and making some parts thicker. I hand wrote the word rocks so that all of the space between the other words and the rock image was used. Once I was happy with my design, I exported the image, opened it up in Cricut Design Space, and cut it out with my Cricut. If you want more details, I've outlined more detailed steps on my crafting channel on how to do this. 
I will link some helpful videos above and in the description box if you want more info. I used silver glitter iron-on for the words this shirt and the image of the rocks and white glitter iron-on for the word rocks. I love how this turned out and I think Aubrey looked so cute in her little shirt. I also used my Procreate app to write out the word two in cursive and write out the number two and I actually used my Cricut to cut out a bunch of little confetti that I sprinkled on our dining room table for some additional decoration for our party. And finally, I created a little cake topper also using the Procreate app on my iPad. To do this, I drew a few squares and had them slightly overlapping. And then I wrote happy birthday, probably it felt like a million times until I got it right, so that the letters touched each other and would ever so slightly intersect with my squares so that when it was cut, there would be no loose pieces. After cutting out my design, I thought I would go ahead and cut out a backing since I only used a single layer of cardstock for my material. To finish off the cake topper, I taped a straw to the back so that I would have something nice and long to stick into my cake, and that was it. My next video is going to give you all of the info you need to recreate this cake for yourself. So if you aren't subscribed yet, I would love for you to stick around and hit that subscribe button and notification bell. While you are at it, you can hit that like button too if you enjoyed this video, and I will catch you in the next one. Hey there, welcome back to Lima Bean Living. In today's video, I am going to be walking you through the recipe and the tutorial for how to make this geode cake. I made it for my daughter's second birthday party and it was my first time ever trying this recipe for both the frosting and the cake, as well as decorating in this particular style. So if you like what you see and wanna make it for yourself, keep watching. So the first thing you are gonna to wanna to do is butter and flour your cake pans. Uh, you want to make sure the entire pan, even the edges, is covered with butter and then sprinkle on your flour and just make sure it is thoroughly coated. Next, we are going to preheat the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And this recipe calls for one and two thirds cups of flour, one cup of sugar, a fourth of a teaspoon of baking soda, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, a half a teaspoon of salt, 3 fourths of a cup of unsalted butter at room temperature, 3 eggs at room temperature, 1 tablespoon of vanilla extract, 1 fourth of a cup of sour cream room temperature, and 1 half cup of milk room temperature. Now I will go ahead and also include all of the information you need in the description box below for some easy referrals here. But what you wanna start doing is sift the flour, salt, baking soda, and baking powder together in a large bowl. And then you're gonna to wanna to separate the egg whites and the yolks. Now, this is just a technique that I picked up in previous baking attempts, and I really liked how the final result turned out, so I thought I would give this technique a try with this cake. So the yolks are actually gonna be combined with half of a cup of the sugar, until it's pale. So we're using half of the sugar with the yolks and then we're eventually gonna use half of the sugar with the egg whites. So again, you're gonna beat the yolks with half of a cup of sugar until it's pale and then we're gonna add in the sour cream, milk, butter, and vanilla. Now, I was mixing this and it kind of resembled cottage cheese. I thought it looked a little weird but then we are gonna add in the dry ingredients into this mixture. And as you add in those little by little, it becomes more of a cake batter like mixture. So don't freak out if you think it looks kind of lumpy and curdled. It ends up being perfectly fine after you add in the dry ingredients. With the egg whites, we are gonna whip these with a whisk until foamy, and then we're gonna add in the remaining half cup of sugar gradually until stiff peaks form. Now, if you have a stand mixer, you could probably be doing this as you are mixing up the other ingredients, or if you don't have you know, separate mixers, this can take place after or before the previous step. Once you have this egg white mixture, you're gonna fold it into the batter that you've made previously, and then divide the mixture evenly into the cake pans. I like to use a kitchen scale to measure for even layers to make sure that they're pretty much identical. 
and I found that each cake came out to be about 472 grams each. Once the batter was in the cake pans evenly divided, I kind of wiggled the pan side to side, spreading out the batter, and then dropped it on the countertop a couple times to just kind of get all the air bubbles out and level out the batter before throwing it in the oven. We are gonna bake these for 30 minutes or until the centers are set and springy, and then we're gonna let the layers cool in the pans for about two minutes and then invert them on a cooling rack. So here you are seeing me kind of upset because I originally thought this cake would come out a little bit taller for each level and I thought I was going to be able to cut each of these cakes in half and end up having four layers. These cakes were probably about an inch tall after they cooled and I realized that just wasn't going to cut it. It wasn't going to result in a cake as tall as I wanted so I ended up making an entirely separate batch of cake, which didn't end up being a big deal. It actually ended up working out. I was wanting to put food coloring in the first batch and forgot, so I figured I would make this one a little pink. And you wanna make sure if you're adding food coloring, you wanna add in more than you think you're gonna need because typically the cakes will become more pale as they bake. So if you want it really, really red, you're gonna have to add a whole lot more food coloring than I did. So it wasn't the end of the world. I kind of wish I would have thought of making a double batch at the beginning. So keep that in mind if you guys are doing this for yourself. If you want a two layer, nine inch round cake, making one batch of this cake will do. But if you want four layers, uh, and then probably about six to seven inches high of a cake, go ahead and double this recipe. The next thing I did was make a simple syrup. This is just equal parts sugar and water. I think I did about a half cup of each and boiled the mixture for just maybe like a minute or two and then let it cool. And then we're gonna take the simple syrup and just kind of coat our cakes. I had enough to coat both sides of the four cakes and this really doesn't add much flavor, but it really does keep the moisture in the cake. And because I was making my cakes days before the party, I really wanted to make sure that they didn't dry out. If you are making a cake for, you know, just dessert later on, you probably can skip this step. But I do think that it really paid off uh, for me, at least in my situation. Once all four cakes were totally coated in the simple syrup, I just wrapped them up in saran wrap and threw them in the freezer. And we're gonna just leave those in the freezer until the night before the party. And that was when I was gonna be assembling my cake. So the next thing I'm gonna be doing is preparing the filling for the cake. Originally, I was thinking I would have some fresh strawberries, but I ended up changing my mind and cutting up the strawberries and sprinkling on some just regular white granulated sugar to kind of give them a sweeter taste and to kind of create a strawberry syrup, which I would also use in my buttercream later on. So that was a kind of a decision on my part that was a last minute one, but I think it ended up paying off. So just to reiterate, I cut up all of these strawberries. I can't say I remember how much, but it was a good amount of strawberries and into thin slices. And then I sprinkled on the sugar kind of layer by layer so that all of the strawberries would come in contact with the sugar, put a lid on my container and let it sit in the fridge for at least a day or two. Then on another day, I decided to make the buttercream for this cake. To make this buttercream, which was enough to cover the entire four layer cake, so you're probably gonna want to half this recipe if you are only making one batch of the cake batter, but this recipe calls for two and a quarter cups of unsalted butter. You're also gonna need one 14 ounce can of sweetened condensed milk, one seven ounce jar of marshmallow fluff, and then I will describe how I added the strawberry flavor uh, as we go along. So the first thing you want to do is add your butter to a stand mixer. Ideally, if you don't have one, you can do this by hand with a hand mixer. Um, it's just gonna kind of take up all of your time because you're gonna be standing there. You want to whip your butter for at least five minutes. You want it to become pale and like very light in color. Since I have a stand mixer, I just kind of set that aside and worked on the flavoring portions. So I brought out my strawberries that I had prepared previously 
and drained off most of the syrup that it formed naturally and then portioned out just a few strawberries to blend up and then I pushed this mixture through a sieve and just kind of got out all the juice and separated the seeds because I did not want that in a smooth buttercream. Once I had completed that step, I went back and checked on my butter and it was now a very light color. I wiped down the sides and made sure to whip it just a little bit longer to make sure everything got thoroughly mixed in. And then we are gonna add in our sweetened condensed milk. Now, a lot of buttercream recipes, you can add in powdered sugar, and I've done that in the past. So adding sweetened condensed milk was a different experience for me. It was something new, and I figured I would give it a try. And I think it turned out pretty well. I unfortunately didn't taste test just the butter and the sweetened condensed milk, and I wish I would have because apparently that is one method of making just a basic buttercream. You probably could add some vanilla and just use that for some frosting, but because I wanted to go with a strawberry feel and a marshmallow fluff feel, those were some extra steps, and I just didn't taste the basic recipe for this sweetened condensed milk buttercream, but keep that in mind, that is an option for future cakes. Then I added in the marshmallow fluff and gave that a good whip, and finally added in my strawberry kind of syrup. Some people I've seen kind of cook this on the stove probably to reduce it down a little bit. That was a step that I decided to skip and I think it turned out okay on my end. As you're whipping at first, adding in this liquid, it makes it kind of a little nerve wracking. It starts to look like it's curdling up a little bit, but then once it gets well incorporated, you have a very smooth and fluffy buttercream. I packaged this up in a container because I wasn't going to be decorating my cake right away and threw this in the fridge. So to assemble this geode cake, I have seen some people just decorate the entire round cake uh, by itself and then trim off a portion for the geode look. But because I didn't want to waste any of my filling, I decided to give the cake a cut first before filling in with frosting and the layers and all of that. So I just kind of cut out a little wedge from my cake and then I just kind of put the scraps aside for me and my family to have a little deconstructed cake taste test later on. And then uh, once I kind of had it the way I liked, I set the cakes aside, scooped off the little portions to give to my mom because that's one of her favorite parts, and then layered the plate that the cake was going to be on with some parchment paper around the edges so that I could take them off and have a clean plate once I was done decorating the cake. Then I thought I would give my buttercream a quick whip since it was in the fridge for a while and I had a pretty big scare. I remember this is the day of the party and this buttercream was curdled. As I was whipping it, I was just kind of freaking out because I was like, this, is, this looks like cottage cheese. This does not look like the smooth buttercream that I made just like a few days before. And my gut reaction was, oh my gosh, it's, you know, the butter's melting, I need to put it back in the fridge. But I did a quick little search on YouTube, and actually it turns out that if your buttercream is kind of curdled like this, it actually needs heat, which I thought was really odd. So I trusted it because I am nowhere near a professional and had my brother help me by holding a little hair dryer as I continued to whip this buttercream and it actually solved the problem. So keep that in mind, learn from my mistake. If your buttercream is just too cold, it's gonna curdle and you're actually gonna have to heat it up to get that smooth finish. So once we got that figured out, I went ahead and assembled my cake. I did a nice thick layer around the edge of the cake and then did a smaller layer kind of on the inside. I mainly wanted to create a little ridge so that my filling wouldn't spill out the sides, but that there was still frosting on each layer as well. So as I'm decorating here, I am gonna quickly explain why I decided to save this step until the day of the party. Our refrigerator was pretty stocked with all of the fresh fruits and stuff that we were gonna be serving that day. And so there really wasn't any space to store a fully decorated cake until the day of the party when all of the food was now out of the refrigerator. 
So I defrosted the cakes that I had individually wrapped the night before in the fridge, took them out the morning of, and by the time I was ready to assemble this cake, the cakes were defrosted and it worked out perfectly. Once the entire cake was assembled with the strawberry centers and the strawberry buttercream frosting fillings, I went ahead and gave this cake a crumb coat. Now for those of you guys who don't know what that is, this is just a very thin layer of buttercream frosting that goes around the entire cake and then we throw that in the fridge to kind of firm up. And this just kind of keeps the crumbs kind of stuck to that portion of the cake so that when you add on your outer layer of frosting, you don't have crumbs kind of floating in and getting everywhere and making it really ugly. So as the cake was in the fridge, I prepared some of the little candied rocks that I was gonna use to create the geode look. I had this pack from Michael's and I wanted to give some of the rocks a darker red look. So I just threw them in with some red food coloring and mixed them around and kind of created an ombre effect with these candied rocks. And I also used some sugar crystals that I made and I made this in a previous video so I will link that above if any of you guys want to know how to make these sugar crystals. So once all of the rocks were prepared for the geode creation, the cake was ready to do the final frosting coat. And I didn't have any special tools, you guys. I just pretty much used a long, like, bread serrated knife to spread the frosting around and smooth out the edges, and that ended up working for me. So don't feel like you need to go buy some expensive cake decorating set to create something like this. Again, I used a bread knife. So work with what you got, and in the end, what really matters is that your kiddos know that they are loved. I just piped on a nice thick layer of frosting around the side and smoothed it out with my knife, kind of filling in the little missing frosting areas with some additional frosting and just continue to smooth it away until I was happy with the final look. One technique that you might find helpful is to clean off your knife or your just flat surface, I guess, your scraper, whatever you are using. Um, after each little swipe of the frosting, this will help make sure that you don't make something bumpy or add frosting where you didn't want to add frosting and it will just help you in the long run get that nice smooth buttercream finish. Once the outer coating was done, I just went ahead and put some extra frosting in the crater for the geode and just kind of worked from the inside out with my darkest candy stones first and then building out to my light pink sugar crystals again that I made in a previous video. One style that I've seen many people do is use some edible gold paint to kind of paint around the rim of these geode rocks, but I didn't have that, so I thought I would use some of these red sugar crystals that I had bought from Michaels. And in the end, I think this ended up looking pretty close to my inspiration photo that I found on Pinterest, and I was happy with the final result. I finished this cake off by adding a homemade cake topper as well as some extra leftover candied rocks, and that was it. Instead of cutting this cake the traditional kind of wedge style, uh, I tried a new technique, and it actually gave us a great view of what the inside of the cake looked like. Everyone had only good things to say about the cake, so I was really happy with how it turned out. The layers were like perfectly moist and delicious. I really hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you are new here, I would love for you to stick around and subscribe. I have a bunch of content, pretty much all things mom. This is actually a video in a little series that I did for my daughter's birthday party, so you can go ahead and check out those other videos if you want. And I just want to reiterate, this was my first time trying this recipe as well as this decoration style, so if I can do it, you guys can do it. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. It all is going to be eaten and digested anyways. So don't put too much pressure on yourself for the final end result. I know that there are areas that I could have improved, but the important part is that we try. Thanks again for watching, and I will catch you in the next one. Hey guys, welcome to Lima Bean Living. 
In my last two videos, I shared how Juan and I found out the gender of our unborn child without spoiling the surprise for any of our family members or friends, and I shared how we decided to break the news to my family with a bun-themed party. Make sure to check out those videos after this one if you haven't already seen them. In today's video, I will be sharing everything I did to prep for the party, including decorations, food, and drinks. For your convenience, I've timestamped each item down below in the description box if you want to skip ahead or review any of these decorations or recipes. I hope you enjoy. So first up, we have our super simple backdrop made from Dollar Tree table covers. After taking the cover out of the plastic wrapping, cut about one inch strips. Make sure you don't undo any of the folds. This will make the cutting the strips much easier. Once all the strips are cut, unravel and separate them and tie them to a string or some yarn. I folded mine in half and held the center loop of the strip on one side of my yarn, then fed the ends of the strip through the loop and pulled tight. If you want a ceiling to floor length backdrop, consider just tying the strip to the yarn with a simple knot. When I went to Dollar Tree, I was hoping to find both pink and blue table covers, but unfortunately they were clearing out the store and only had pink and white. So I picked up some blue pom-poms to add to my decorations instead. This DIY is something that can be done way in advance to avoid extra stress the day of the party. And on that topic, I did try to get as much done beforehand as possible to make my life easier. However, if I shared what I did in actual order, this video would be quite chaotic. So I will just make a note on the screen when each step was done, if completed over the course of a few days.
you can. Next up, I needed to prepare the family sign with the baby's name for the name reveal portion of our party. Make sure to check out our reveal video to see the final results. I actually made this sign for about $3 using Dollar Tree products and it was quite easy. I will link the tutorial video up above if you want to make something similar for yourself. A few days ahead of the party, I prepared chocolate-covered pretzels using melting chocolates and sprinkles. You might be able to find pink and blue dipped pretzels already assembled in stores to make your life easier, or you can be like me and just take on as much as you can chew. Either way, these are a fun treat to have. Next up was dyed deviled eggs. I like to boil mine for 17 minutes before an ice bath. Then I peeled the eggs and soaked them in pink and blue dyed water until they became my desired color. Once my eggs were dyed, I stored them in the fridge in a paper towel lined container. The next day, the day before the party, I cut the eggs in half, took out the yolks, and made the filling by combining the yolks with mayo, mustard powder, salt, and pepper. I did this to taste, but you can easily search for exact measurements in recipes online. Once the filling was made, I stored it in a piping bag in the fridge. I also returned the egg whites back to their container with new paper towels and found a spot in the fridge for them too. The day of the party, I assembled the deviled eggs on their serving plates and topped the pink ones with paprika. I took this approach mainly to save refrigerator space because ours was really limited. Obviously, if you have tons of room in your fridge, you could probably assemble these the day before to limit the stress the day of. Next up, I made Funfetti mini donuts using a new silicone mold that I got off of Amazon. Because I was going to be making a homemade cinnamon buns for dessert, I thought I would take it easy and do a box cake for these donuts. After the 4th of July, we picked up some red, white, and blue Funfetti mix, and I thought this would be perfect for a gender reveal because it kind of looks like pink and blue once baked. Still I'm better with and without you. Charming. 
To frost the donuts, I just took a tub of Pillsbury frosting and microwaved it for 30 seconds to get it runny. Then I divided it in two bowls and colored them pink and blue. Next, I just dip the donuts in the frosting and top them with sprinkles. When the frosting starts to cool, it does get more firm, making it harder to dip. When this happens, just microwave the bowl of frosting for about 10 to 15 seconds and give it a mix and you should be good to go. Two days before the party, I also prepared a yummy cream cheese marshmallow dip to go with some fresh strawberries. A single recipe calls for about 14 ounces of marshmallow fluff, or two containers, and an 8 ounce brick of cream cheese. However, I doubled this recipe for the party, so keep that in mind. All you have to do is whip the two ingredients together and you are good to go. I stored the mixture in an empty cream cheese container until the day of the party to save space, but you can store it in its serving container if you have the space in your fridge. The day of the party, I decided to add some pink and blue by dyeing a little bit of the dip, plopping on pink and blue dollops on top, and swirling them with a knife. The night before the party, I set up a little station for our friends and family to write letters to our little one for when he or she turns 18. We did this when I was pregnant with Aubrey and it is a tradition that I hope to continue if we are blessed with more children. Next up, we have babies in a blanket, also known as pigs in a blanket. I bought these little weenies and crescent roll dough, and using half of one crescent triangle, I wrapped a little weenie in such a way that it resembled a swaddled baby. We wrapped half of the weenies the day before the party and stored them covered in the fridge in case we ran out of time the day of to make them all. And then the day of the party, I dyed an egg white, pink and blue, and gave these little babies an egg white wash so that we'd have babies swaddled in pink and blue blankets. 
Had I not had family to help me assemble the rest of these, I would have definitely needed to prep all of these the day before because time was limited. It's hard for me to let go But I think that I'm finally feeling good again So hard cause I loved you But I'm finally feeling like myself All of the wounds that were opened by you are now closing the night before the party, I assembled the balloon arch I bought off Amazon. The pack came with a variety of sizes of balloons. So before I did anything, I sorted out the balloons so that assembling the arch would be much easier. Instead of using the flimsy plastic strip that came with the pack of balloons, I also purchased a reusable arch that attaches to the end of the table. I believe the balloons cost about $11 and the arch kit cost just under $15. After blowing up the balloons, you just attach them to these little plastic rings and then feed the collapsible rod through the hole of the rings. Then comes the two-person job of bending the rod to secure in the table attachments. Once the arch was assembled, I attached the mini balloons using these little glue dots that came in the balloon kit. I love the way this turned out and I'm excited to use this technique again for Aubrey's third birthday party, which is just around the corner, so stay tuned. The night before the party, I also outlined a very detailed schedule of everything that needed to be done the day of the party. This really helped me stay on task and gave my family an idea of what they could help me with and what they should stay away from if they wanted to lend a helping hand. I definitely plan on doing this again in the future. 
Now let's move on to the highlight of the party, the cinnamon buns. I've shared this recipe before and I will link that video up above. The day before the party, I made a triple batch of the cream cheese frosting. My plan was to place some pink or blue food coloring in the center of it, then cover up the food coloring with more frosting so that no one would see the gender reveal color. I was a little nervous that the color would bleed or be absorbed by the frosting, so I saved the coloring process for the day of the party. This ended up working out well and I had no issues. I kept the bowl in the fridge until about 30 minutes before the reveal so that it would soften up a bit. Overall, I'm very pleased with how this reveal turned out. The day before the party, I also prepared the filling for the cinnamon buns and I measured out two sets of the dry ingredients to make life easier the next day. The day of the party, I made two batches of the cinnamon bun dough and assembled the buns before our guests arrived. During the beginning half of the party, I let the buns rise in their pans and then I baked them about 20 minutes before the reveal so that they would be ready to enjoy as soon as the frosting was mixed and colorful. These treats were definitely a highlight of the evening. Another fun addition to this party was our cotton candy drink station. I bought some cotton candy from the Dollar Tree and split it up in a bunch of cups. Our guests could either eat the cotton candy by itself or pour some 7-Up on top for a fun, colorful experience. The final taste was also enjoyable as well.
The other bun-themed food I incorporated in the party were sliders. I prepped the buns the day before the party by slicing them in half. The day of the party, I lined cookie trays with foil and pressed ground beef, filling the entire pan about an inch thick, then seasoned the meat with steak seasoning. I probably used somewhere between two to three pounds of meat in the pan, and this was enough for about 24 Hawaiian rolls. But these pans and the rolls were very large, probably much larger than what you would need. So I would recommend maybe about one to two pounds of meat in a nine by 13 pan, and then probably like 12 Hawaiian rolls or 16 Hawaiian rolls. Next, I sprayed the buns with cooking spray and let them toast in the oven at 350 degrees. When they came out, I topped the bottom buns with Thousand Island dressing and lettuce and the top buns with mayo. I cooked the meat trays in the same 350 degree oven for about 20 to 25 minutes, drained off the fat and topped the meat with cheese. I threw this back in the oven just to melt and then transferred the meat to the buns. Then I just cut the sliders and we were ready to serve all of our guests all at once. I love this method and can definitely see myself doing it again in the future. The last thing I needed to prep was pouring out our store-bought candy and making sure the snack table was set. I have to say throwing this party was a bit overwhelming at times because I wanted it to be perfect and there were a number of items that had to be done during the party, like making the sliders so that they would be hot and baking the cinnamon buns so that they could be served warm. Making my timestamp schedule definitely helped things run smoother. Overall, I'm super happy with how everything turned out and the guests really seemed to enjoy themselves. I hope this video gave you some inspiration if you are throwing a gender reveal party or really any gathering. If you liked this video, please leave it a big thumbs up and make sure you are subscribed. I will be throwing another party soon celebrating my daughter's third birthday, and you won't want to miss it. Have an amazing day, and I'll catch you in the next one. Welcome back to Lima Bean Living. In today's video, I will be doing half of a party prep for Aubrey's third birthday party. She's been loving cars, loving construction cars and ambulances, and so I thought that this theme would be really fitting for her. It was super easy to make everything like work well together, so I'm excited to show you guys my decorations and DIYs in this video. I will also be sharing half of an Amazon gift card code for you guys because you are such awesome subscribers and viewers, and you will be able to catch the other half of the Amazon code in our second party prep video where I will be taking care of all things food. So keep watching. So first things first, let's talk about the pinata. I was inspired by something I saw on Amazon, but I didn't want to pay the like $15 to $20 plus, you know, whatever else it costs to get that to our house. And I just wanted to save some money. I knew we had boxes lying around and construction paper. And so I just kind of figured, hey, why not make this myself? A uh, dump truck isn't too many weird shapes and designs that I needed to worry about. So I figured I was, you know, able to 
take care of this myself and just save us a little bit of extra cash. Little did I know, this did take me some time. <laughs> um, luckily, I was able to get most of it done during like one of Aubrey's naps. And just getting the basic frame of this box kind of car thing took somewhere between 40 to 60 minutes. And then on top of that, I had to, you know, make it look a little bit better than just a box and cover it with construction paper. Obviously, depending on your theme, making your own may not be as easy or worth the extra effort, and you might just want to spend the $20 for a pinata, but I had the time and the supplies, and I figured why not. So after filling up the pinata with the candy, I asked Juan to figure out how we're going to hang this thing, and we ended up having to dump all the candy out, and Juan made like a three-knot string contraption and with like plastic knives in there for extra support, and he was able to hang this very well. I wasn't able to catch him on film doing it, but I thought, you know, even if we needed to string, you know, something through the sides of the car so that it would hold up nicely with kids whacking at it. Um, we could have done that as well, but Juan took care of that and I was really grateful for him for doing that. Moving on to the gift bags, I purchased these from Dollar Tree and these were super simple and easy to customize for this car themed party. I just drew with a Sharpie some lines down the front and made it look like little roads and that was it. I probably could have come up with something more creative, but hey, this was an easy DIY for me to do. Then I filled them with some car tattoos as well as some like tractor stickers. These I got off Amazon in like huge bulk. I didn't use anywhere close to the total number that I had actually purchased. So Aubrey will have plenty of tattoos and stickers to play with from here on out. But um, in addition to these guys, I also filled these little goodie bags with some Lego sets from the Dollar Tree. And these, you can definitely see what you're getting on the box. I really liked these and I wanted just there to be variety because siblings were going to be getting these toys and I didn't want them to have like five of the same car. So I got a variety and everyone got one of those little packs. There was another brand of Legos that had mystery cars inside to encourage you to buy more and collect them all if you want to make it more uniform. For this party, I also purchased like a big pack of Amazon decorations. 
In the pack came caution tape, which was actually tape. It was sticky on the whole backside, along with some banners, balloons, dangling decorations, a cake topper, and other signs. Everything had to be assembled. The banners had to be strung, the cake topper had to be glued to its stick, and so on. Even the little dangling streamers had to be kind of ripped apart at the perforation, but Aside from that minor inconvenience, I really liked this pack of decorations, and it's still in pretty good condition, so I may just save it if Jack ever has a birthday party with the same theme. So I wanted to have like a cute little way to incorporate the food into the theme of the party so I purchased these mini chalkboard signs from the Dollar Tree and what I wanted to put on them was like too intricate for the sign. It was a little too small and too many letters that I would have had to write with a piece of chalk. So instead I used my Cricut to cut out the phrases on removable vinyl so that I could reuse the signs again in the future if I wanted to. To get these signs to stand up on or near plates of food where I couldn't just stab them into the actual food, I used these little caramels and it worked out perfectly. If the caramels didn't go onto the plate and had to sit on the table, I just kind of left them in their plastic and let them stand up like that. I made some additional signs using a yellow sheet of Dollar Tree poster paper and my Cricut. What would have been easier would be to print out the designs for like some of the smaller signs that I made, but I used this as an opportunity to try a new transferring technique using parchment paper. And I'm really glad I tried this because it worked out really well and I can definitely see using this method again in the future. After I packed away my Cricut, I remembered I needed to make one more sign, and since it was already pretty large, I decided I would just draw it by hand, even though it wasn't as clean cut as some of my other signs. But I think it turned out fine, and it was, you know, a relaxing a little experience to do something by hand. You hurt me, you did, several times. It hurts to admit that we're no different I find it hard to commit But you don't even try Still I'm better with and without you Oh, I, I'm on it, I want it But why do you seem to come? 
And then finally, I used one of Aubrey's dump trucks after cleaning it to add a little bit of extra spice to the chip bowl. I just used a little piece of foil to help the chips continuously flow out of the back of the truck. And it that like little decoration really took it up a notch and really added to the theme of the party. So next up, we are creating some little street lines using this leftover yellow poster board paper and some black table covers from the Dollar Tree to create a vehicle street themed table cover for all of the tables outside. I used double sided tape to secure these lines to the plastic table cover and I really love how it looks. It's so easy and yet it adds so much to the party. So in addition to the balloons that came in the Amazon pack, I did have to pick up a few extra packs of balloons from the Dollar Tree for our balloon arch. Typically, they don't carry orange balloons, but since Halloween is just around the corner, I was able to snag some, so it worked out perfectly. Juan helped me tie the balloons as I was blowing them up, which really helped cut the time in half. And I used the same balloon arch that I did for our gender reveal, which I really prefer over the plastic strips that come in packs of balloons. I wanted to add a little bit more to the balloon arch, so I picked up a little th number three balloon from the Dollar Tree to add to this balloon arch, as well as the large dump truck balloon that came in my Amazon pack that I mentioned earlier. They were a little hard to secure to the balloon arch using the little like balloon glue dots, so I actually had to use some of that caution tape to secure these guys to the arch and that worked out very nicely. On the table with the balloon arch, I figured I would display the goodie bags, the pinata up until the point where we needed to use it, and leave some space for any gifts that Aubrey was going to receive. Okay, next up is, again, something super simple but really added to the party. It is chalk paint street lines. So since we were going to have an outdoor party, I thought I would decorate our walkways to look like little streets for the kids. I made some yellow chalk paint using the recipe that I've shared in a previous video, which is just cornstarch water and some food coloring, and painted lines on all of the sidewalks in our backyard. And like I said, I really like this addition because it is simple, it is cheap, and it really adds to the theme of the party without much extra work. So next up, I got these punching balloons from the Dollar Tree, and I figured I would hang them across our yard to resemble wrecking balls. I made sure to hang the balloons low enough for the little ones to reach, but not low enough where they could like get the string around their necks. I didn't want to have to deal with that. And I wasn't sure exactly how this decoration or activity would go over, but all of the kids really liked these, even the older kids, which kind of surprised me. They were playing kind of like a volleyball game with it. And overall, I'm really happy that I added this, if not just for the decoration, but for the actual usage of it from the little kiddos in our family. Another little activity that was a hit with the little kids was this car wash station. The kids were equipped with chalk to color the vehicles and then water and a sponge to wipe it off. And the last little prepared activity was this coloring station. Dollar Tree sold this very large coloring book with many sheets and even one sheet of stickers. And I can definitely see setting up something similar in the future because it kept the kiddos contained and concentrated for a good period of time. 
And just like for her second birthday, I wanted to create Aubrey a shirt that went with the theme of the party, but not directly related to her birthday. So I searched for an excavator in Cricut Design Space, chose the only free option and modified it to say, I dig this shirt, then ironed on the design on a plain shirt that I had on hand and we were good to go. And I think she looked super cute on her birthday. So like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I am going to be providing you guys right here with half of an Amazon gift card code. Obviously, you don't have the second half and you'll have to wait till Friday's video to figure that out and it will be first come first serve. So I won't know after this video airs who's going to win until our video on Friday, but if you are the first person to go ahead and claim that second part of our code and therefore grab this Amazon gift card for yourself, I'd like to say congratulations. And for everyone else who maybe was just a little too late to the party, uh, there will be more opportunities in the future. I kind of do random giveaways like this anyways. So make sure you are tuning in on Mondays and Fridays when I post so that you don't miss out on anything. Then I just had to finish setting up the food display in the kitchen. I will be covering all the food for this party in my next video, so stay tuned. But to add a little bit more decoration to the table, I placed some toy cars in the empty space, along with some confetti that was left over from our gender reveal. Let me know in the comments which decoration was your favorite, and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you are new. I'd love to have you stick around. Hey there, welcome back to Lima Bean Living, or if you are new here, hello, my name is Emily. Welcome to my little motherhood channel where I take care of all things mom. In today's video, I'm sharing all of the food and treats I prepared for my daughter's third birthday party. This is actually the second half of my party prep for her birthday. In part one, I cover all the decorations and DIYs. So if you haven't checked that out, make sure to go and watch that video after this one. But without further ado, let's get into this. First up, we have a super simple but adorable treat, traffic light pretzels, which can be made ahead of time. The first thing I did was separate a bag of M&Ms by color. I thought it was funny that the colors weren't more close in number. Statistically, you would have thought so, but that's not the way it is, I guess. There were way more greens than reds. I figured I'd leave the orange and the brown together since they fit the color scheme of the party, and we set the blue aside to enjoy some other time. Later, when I had more time, I took the red, yellow, and green M&Ms, some white melting chocolate, and pretzel sticks, and assembled the treats by dipping the pretzels in the melted chocolate, and then placing the M&Ms in the order they appear on a traffic light. Later, I found it easier to place the dip pretzel down on the wax paper first before placing the M&Ms. That way, if the pretzel rolled on its side or just found a more comfortable spot, the M&Ms wouldn't go with it. Next up, we have spare tire brownies. To make these, I just used some box brownie mix to make life easier, especially since I was planning on making Aubrey's birthday cake from scratch. I piped the batter into these silicone donut molds that I also used for our gender reveal party. Later on, I figured it was easier just to scoop out the batter into the molds and then use a spatula to wipe off the excess from the center of each cavity. Me 
Then I baked these and threw them in the freezer soon after they got out of the oven to firm up a bit. I noticed that if I just tried to take them out of the molds once they cooled, they would be more inclined to break apart. Throwing them in the freezer made them firm up enough to come out of the molds easier and quicker. This was nice because I only had one mold in each size and I had to repeat this process many times, which took forever. But in my opinion, it was worth it. I also prepared this treat a few days in advance and stored them in the freezer until the morning of the party. The day before the party, I set up all that I could to make life easier the day of. I laid out the snacks and their labels according to their categories. In addition to my two themed treats, I wanted sweet and savory dipping stations. The sweet dipping station was going to feature Nutella, strawberries, graham crackers, mini pretzel sticks, and some nuts. The savory dipping station was going to feature ranch, broccoli, and carrot sticks. And of course, each of these foods was going to be labeled with something that fit the construction theme. They said, don't fall, don't forget all the things you've been taught, you've been told. Don't blink, don't run, don't turn left or turn right or look straight at the sun. My mind's gone in circles, I'm trying to fight it. Get in these voices inside to stay quiet. Go to the place where all then it was time to make the cake. Since I've shared this cake recipe a number of times on this channel, I will link the recipe video up above and use this time to share the second half of the Amazon code I mentioned in my previous party prep video, where I cover all the decorations and DIYs. Again, I'd like to congratulate the first person who claims this reward. Thank you for watching my videos and supporting my channel. Please let me know if you were able to claim this prize either down below in the comments or message me on my Instagram. If you showed up just a little too late to this party and unable to claim the code, please know that I really appreciate you as well and there will be more opportunities in the future. But let's get back to the cake. After the cakes cooled, I wrapped them in plastic wrap and threw them in the freezer until I was ready to assemble the cake. Since I was planning on putting crushed Oreos on top of the cake for decoration, I needed to separate the cream from about two rows of cookies. I set the cream aside and crushed the cookies in a Ziploc bag. Then I cut up the last row of cookies to be used as part of the filling for the center of the cake. Next up was the frosting. I wanted vanilla frosting in between the two cake layers and chocolate on the outside. So I began by making the vanilla frosting using the same recipe I have in the past. But this time I decided to add the Oreo cream that I had removed to the frosting. I really liked how this tasted and can definitely see making this again in the future.
afterwards, I made my chocolate buttercream frosting, again using the same recipe I've shared in the past. I put both of these frostings in containers and threw them in the fridge until I was almost ready to assemble the cake. To assemble this cake, I placed one of the frozen layers down on the cake board I bought a few videos ago, outlined the number three on a piece of paper towel to later serve as a type of stencil, and then I did a sealed border of the vanilla Oreo cream frosting. To the sea, baby, I never say I poked holes in the cake and poured a layer of chocolate ganache in the middle and threw it in the fridge to firm up. Then I topped the ganache with almost all of the vanilla Oreo cream frosting and squished in the cut up Oreos I prepared earlier. Then came the second layer of the frozen cake. I covered both layers in the chocolate frosting and then it was time to decorate. I bought these cars from Target and planned on using just a couple on the cake and the rest on the table as decorations. I placed the paper towel three towards the lower right hand corner of the cake and covered the top and some of the sides of the cake with the crushed Oreos. Then I vacuumed up the mess. I colored the remaining vanilla Oreo cream frosting green, placed the construction cars on the cake and cake board, and piped on some grass around the cake. Then I added a cake topper that came in an Amazon decoration pack, a sign that I made myself, and a gold glitter number three candle that I got from Dollar Tree. I love how easy this cake was to assemble and how it turned out. It really gives you a lot of wiggle room if you're not an experienced baker or decorator and it tasted delicious too, so I'm definitely making this again in the future. Finally, we have our nacho station. The day before the party, we prepped the tomatoes, the onions, and even the ground beef. The day of the party, we put the beef in a crock pot so that it could heat up again, and it was perfect for the party. We put some refried beans in another, and the nacho cheese in another little crock pot to go with the other toppings like lettuce, sour cream, guac, and so on. Unfortunately, I lost the footage of that final result, but I hope you get the picture.
Then I just had to finish preparing and setting up the food display in the kitchen. All of these foods were popular during the party, but the most popular were the spare tire brownies. I got a lot of compliments on them, and I think it was because they seemed to be just the perfect size. You could pop one in your mouth and not feel like you had too much or too little. However, that didn't stop people from going back for more. Let me know in the comments if you plan on trying any of these treats, and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you are new. I would love to have you stick around. Hey there, welcome back to Lima Bean Living. In today's video, we are taking you through Aubrey's frozen party prep. Uh, we're just focusing on the food because I had like four hours of footage to go through and just on the food. We will be doing a decorations and activities party prep in my next video, so stay tuned for that. But I'm super excited to show you guys the foods that we did as well as two different cake recipes. So let's get to it. So we are starting off looking at the sides and the main course. I tried to have every food fit the theme. So we had some Otter Pops that I was gonna freeze and we named them Elsa's Flurries. I did freeze some of them like this so that we could have like half portions for the kids. And once they were frozen, I just cut them down the middle and it was good to go. Next up, we are making some frozen hearts. If you guys know the movie, you kind of see where the frozen heart fits in. But uh, if not, Anna, you know, her heart gets frozen and only true love's kiss can break, you know, the magical spell or whatever. So we decided to go ahead and chocolate dip strawberries in some white chocolate. So I'm rinsing them off first in some water and vinegar, and you will see the water was quite dirty afterwards. So I'm very happy that I did this. And then I let them dry for like a good while because I definitely wanted the chocolate to stick to the strawberry. I didn't want it to be wet and kind of slide off and make a mess. So we're cleaning, drying, and then we will be dipping later on in the evening. So I used some melting chocolate from Michael's. These ones had like cute little sprinkles inside and I only had one bag. So I dipped as many strawberries as I could. And to dip them, I actually put in like three toothpicks in the stem of the strawberry. And it made it a lot easier to like, you know, securely dip the strawberry without worrying about it falling into the chocolate. After dipping, I laid them on a sheet of wax paper and just let them kind of like firm up. And I did this the night before the party. Uh, because we had a lot more strawberries left over, I did have some other white melting chocolate and I just either sprinkled on sprinkles that I got from Dollar Tree, you guys will see the packages later on, or I just dipped the chocolate dipped strawberry in the sprinkles. And I just thought this would be like a fun little decorative type of strawberry for the kiddos. I placed these strawberries on their serving trays and then based on what I read online, I covered them in foil and let them sit overnight. Unfortunately, they were very like, all the strawberry juice kind of seeped out. So I had to like wipe down the trays, remove the strawberries, wipe down the trays and put the strawberries back. It was kind of ridiculous. I should have just dipped them the morning of. But Aubrey saw that I was dipping and she got to dipping too. We talked about the benefits of an apron and we just enjoyed these little chocolate dipped pretzels ourselves.
Next up, we are making Kristoff's ice blocks. So we are gonna be making Jello jigglers. You actually use two boxes of six ounces of Jello, so 12 ounces total, any flavor that you guys want, and two and a half cups of boiling water. I just filled my measuring cup up with water and then microwaved it for a couple minutes until it started to like bubble. Poured it in the Jello mixture and then um, mixed it up until it was fully dissolved. Then I sprayed a casserole dish with some cooking spray and then just kind of like wiped it in with a paper towel because we want just a very light coating to help the jello come off easier when it's hardened. After that, we pour the jello mixture in and then refrigerate it for a few hours. I did this like the day before, so I just left it in the fridge and I am cutting it up into cubes the day of the party. Now, if you want, you could do different a different theme. You could use cookie cutters, but I just wanted ice blocks and it made it a whole lot easier on myself. I honestly can say I could see cutting jello like this forever. Like it was, I like cutting laminated papers and this was kind of gave me like a similar feel. Also, these were a hit. They are very delicious. And had I known that it was only gonna make like the small little trays worth, I probably should have done like two or three batches instead of just one, but you live and you learn. So um, I'm doing like a kind of a charcuterie board feel in my display of food. So I wanted two little stations of the Jello. So that's why I filled up two different bowls. Next, we are doing True Love Kisses, so just simple store-bought kisses. I like the cookies and cream, so that's what we went with. So for the main course, we are just doing Costco uh, chicken and Swiss rollers and croissant sandwiches. For Hans and Anna's sandwiches, we're doing snow-capped mountains with cream cheese and a sweet salsa. It's like my family's signature treat. We're doing peanuts for trolls, yogurt covered pretzels for snowflakes, and some of Olaf's noses and ranch um, for another little side. And last but not least, we have some coronation chocolate. So as you guys saw, my little, you know, birthday girl wanted to help. We're going to be making some of Sven's treats or carrot cake cupcakes. This is like my mom's like family recipe and everyone who eats it loves it. So if you want to go ahead and give it a try, I will be including the recipe in this video uh, so you guys can kind of pay attention. I am doing a double batch because I figured I'd rather have more cupcakes than necessary. And I actually made these like... I want to say one or two weeks out from the party and then froze them so they actually freeze really well defrost fairly quickly and because of like being in the freezer like they contain and retain a lot of moisture so it just makes the cake like so much better so um, this was one way that I you know stressed a little less is getting this all done ahead of time and with the chunks of carrots that were just slightly too big, I decided to cook these and make some baby food for Jack. So it was a win-win. What do you have there, Aubrey? A finger. <laughs> That's not sprinkles. See these fingers? Look at finger them on now. So I'm gonna make fingers. So then we're gonna do that with you. A sour finger. We can't find my
So this double batch made, I want to say at least 48 cupcakes and I'm putting them on like a paper towel just because the bottom of the cupcake does get a little tiny bit greasy, um, which is okay. I mean like it, the taste of it at the end is totally fine, but it's just for some reason the bottom of the liners get a little greasy. So I'm putting those there and then we are moving on to make the cream cheese frosting, which is delicious. So just a little tip is you really want to whip and beat your butter and cream cheese for a good number of minutes. It really incorporates a lot of air and just makes the frosting just extra fluffy and like less dense. I did have a little bit of cake batter left over, so I decided to make a tiny little mini cake for Aubrey's actual birthday. So that is what this little pan is for. But we are going to now move on to piping on the frosting. I'm using a couple different tips. I've used this first tip um, before in the past when I've made this cake. And then later on, I will be trying for the first time ever to pipe little carrots on top of the cupcakes. So I'm excited to show you guys how those turned out as well as some tips that I learned as I was doing it. So 
So like I mentioned, this is my very first time using this tip. Uh, this is the type of um, piping tip that you want to use when you're making leaves. And this was my very first leaf, you guys. This is a big deal. <laughs> um, and I came up with like a better technique later on to kind of make them more carrot-like. So um, stay tuned for that. But then I went ahead and dyed the rest of my frosting uh, kind of orange for the carrots and used just like a simple little round tip to pipe on the carrots on each cupcake. So like I mentioned, I kind of learned as I went and you can see how I'm doing the leaves here. I'm kind of going back and forth, back and forth, and it creates a more ruffled look. Same with the carrot. I wanted it to look really realistic and have those little lines like carrots do. So kind of pushing the piping bag back and forth as I was piping both the leaves and the carrot really gave that realistic kind of look. Moving on to Aubrey's little mini cake for her actual birthday, I thought it would be cute to pipe on carrots uh, in the shape of a four, which was the age that she's turning. And then I thought, you know, I still have some extra frosting. I might as well just do a little rim around the bottom. And I love how simple this is. You could really do this for any age. And it just really looks, I don't know, really cute in my opinion. So we enjoyed this on her actual birthday. Moving back to the party, um, I'm putting my frozen carrot cake cupcakes out the day of the party. This is just a couple hours before the party and honestly I probably could have put them out like at the start of the party and they would have do totally defrosted by the time it was time for dessert. But they are out and that was all set up. So we are going to move on to the highlight of <laughs> my cakes and my desserts and my foods. This is Aubrey's birthday cake. Um, I really didn't need to make this cake, but I wanted to kind of do a redemption for myself. I have done an ombre cake and I've done a drip cake before. And when I tried to do a colored drip, it was a total fail. <laughs> so I wanted to make this cake um, to redeem myself and I'm super proud of how it turned out. I am making a vanilla cake here. Um, I've made this a number of times on my channel, so I will, you know, you can find videos of me making it in different versions or different looks or whatever in my recipe videos. Um, but we're making just a basic vanilla cake with a basic vanilla um, buttercream frosting. So nothing too special when it comes to flavors here. For me, this was all about the decoration. But if you guys are really looking for the recipe, um, I will make sure to put this recipe down below in the description box for your convenience, as well as the carrot cake recipe. Uh, that way it's, you know, just really simple and easy to find. So what we are going to start with the cake batter, I because I wanted the cake to look ombre on the outside, I also wanted it to look ombre on the inside. So we are going to add progressively more purple food coloring as we make our little cakes. And I have little six inch silicone cake pans um, and I only have two of them. So I have to like do two cakes at a time 
get them out, wrap them in saran wrap, get them ready to be frozen, and then repeat the process a couple more times. So that is what we're doing here. Uh, and I wanted just to have a very pale purple cake and then get darker and darker as we go. The nice thing about this vanilla cake is that when it cools down, you really don't need to level it off. And what I decided to do was wrap these cakes up in saran wrap while they were still like hot to retain that moisture and then I'm popping them in the freezer in a little bit. This was in lieu of making like a simple syrup and letting the simple syrup soak in with the cakes. I just decided, you know what, let's wrap it up. It's a technique that I've seen other people do. Wrap it up while it's still warm and um, then when it defrosts from the freezer, you will have a very moist cake. So this ended up working out for us and I didn't really have to make a simple syrup. And then this last little purple layer was like half of a layer and we didn't end up using it. It was more of like a, let's taste the cake before I assemble everything, just to make sure that it was delicious. Next, we are moving on to our American buttercream. Um, I think I'm making, so I made a double batch of the cake, I believe. And then I am making a double batch of the frosting. And this ended up being like just enough for the cake. Um, we did have a little bit left over. And uh, again, the technique of like really whipping your butter for like five, at least five minutes, really helps the frosting be light and fluffy and smooth and creamy rather than like super dense and chunky. So when you're done making your buttercream, it will have a very slight yellow tone to it. And one trick to making your frosting look more white is to add a little bit of purple. I didn't worry too much about adding too much purple because I was gonna have a purple frosting anyways. But if you are looking for a white frosting, add just the slightest bit of purple. You can always add more, but add the slightest bit of purple and get it to that white tone that you're looking for. Then I went ahead and did a crumb coat on this cake, assembled it. All of the layers of the cake were frozen, so it made the buttercream like firm up really quick and just kind of everything hold its shape. Once this was assembled, I popped it back into the freezer and worked on making my ombre tones of purple. And I did the same technique that I did with my cake. I, you know, portioned out my frosting, added a little bit more purple, mixed it in, portioned that out added more purple and so on until I had five different like tones of purple. And uh, then once I had this, it was time to assemble the cake again. So to frost the cake, I just piped on, you know, the different layers of colors up the cake. And in between colors, I did like, I alternated so that there was as best of a blend as possible. I have done an ombre cake before and it looked a little bit more chunky in color. This one blended a little bit better, but it wasn't like perfect, but you know, I'm very happy with how it turned out. Once the cake was fully frosted, I moved on to making the decorations for the cake, which I was going to assemble. Um, once I had the decorations prepared, I was planning on assembling the cake the day of so that nothing would like melt in the fridge or freezer. 
and you might see what I'm talking about later. Um, but we're starting off by making a little decorative four with melting chocolate and um, some sprinkles. Now I did this before I dipped the strawberries, so that's why you're seeing the sprinkles in the box and the melting chocolate in the bag. <laughs> so you just pipe whatever you whatever design you want. In this case, I'm doing a four, but you could do any number. You could literally write out someone's name if you wanted and cover it with sprinkles. While the chocolate was still like wet, I did take my little cake pop stick and just kind of clean up the four, kind of pushing the sprinkles in. And then once that was nice and hard, I flipped it over, attached my little uh, cake pop stick, and then decked the backside out with chocolate and covered it up with some more sprinkles and let that firm up. Then we were done. This was really, really easy, a technique that I haven't done before, but I can definitely see doing this again in the future. So my vision from the cake not only was to have the four on top and candles, but like I wanted it to look like ice chunks like sticking out of the cake. And I decided to melt some purple and blue Jolly Ranchers. Um, I mixed some together and then I'm, you're going to see in a second I make some just separate because I was like, oh gosh, I don't know how these colors are going to look with the frosting, if it's going to clash, blah, blah, blah. But anyways, you melt them at, I believe, 350 in the oven just for a couple of minutes. You see them melt, and then I used a little um, toothpick and just kind of swirled it around or like attached the light colors together, let that harden, and then I broke it up into pieces. And I tried to have more like triangular pieces just to kind of have like one edge be like sharp so that I can have that kind of pointing up out of the cake. So I did this, I want to say the night before, and um, let it firm up or whatever, and just kind of like let it be at room temperature. I was afraid to put it in the fridge because I didn't want the moisture to like melt the Jolly Rancher. Uh, so those were just kind of laying out, waiting for me to decorate the cake. So for my last decoration for the cake, it's actually the colored drip. I have 12 ounces of melting chocolate and half a cup of whipping cream. We heat up the whipping cream just so it's starting to simmer and pour it over the chocolate and mix it until it is smooth. I found this recipe online and it is way more than I ever needed for this cake. I probably could have like quartered this recipe and we would have been fine. But um, anyways, now I have just extra dipping chocolate for strawberries or something. I didn't like the color that it ended up being, so I just added some more blue food coloring, and um, this was left over from my baby uh, gender reveal for Jack. Um, but I really like how it ended up turning out. And then I just put a little bit on top of the cake, pushed it over the side, and let it drip down. And I am so happy with how just even this part of the cake looks, let alone with the other decorations. Like I'm so happy that this was a success. I can definitely see doing this again in the future. And um, like I said, I did not use that much of this blue drip. So next time I will not make as much because it was so, I had so much extra. But now we are just putting in my little Jolly Ranchers, sticking them in. I'm actually doing this like in the middle of the party because I didn't want my cake to start melting because it was a warm day. So I just kind of last, you know, like last minute assembled this cake and then put it out on my little cake stand. But I am so happy with how the cakes turned out, with how my little food table turned out. And I'm so excited to show you guys all of the other decorations and activities in my next video. So thank you again so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, learned something new, got a recipe idea that you wanna try, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button and make sure you guys subscribe so that you don't miss out on my other party prep videos as well as all of my other motherhood content. I will catch you guys in the next one.
there, welcome back to Lima Bean Living. If you guys are new here, welcome to my motherhood channel where I take care of all things mom. In today's video, it's actually part two of now a three-part series of my party prep for my daughter's fourth birthday party. We did the Frozen theme. So in my last video, I did mention that my next video, which is this one, would be decorations and activities, games and prizes. But I had over five hours of footage to cover for you guys and there was no way I was gonna make it into a reasonably length video. So that is why I'm splitting it up into two videos. And so we're, this party prep is gonna be a total of three videos. Make sure you watch closely because there will be a little surprise somewhere in this video and let's get to it. So let's start off by looking at some of the activities that I planned. So I had, I think five activities that were just out in the open for everybody. Some were on the tables, some were at stations for the kids. And so I just really wanted like people to have something to do if they didn't wanna just sit and talk, if they are, you know, busy bodies. So one of the first things that I made, and this you can make way ahead of time, was ice block chalk. Now I've made homemade chalk paint before in the past, and you just use cornstarch and water until you get like the right consistency. If it's too thick, you can add some more water. If you think it's too like runny, and see-through you add some more cornstarch and you can always add food coloring to make it any color of your choice but I just made this little mixture poured it in a little ice cube tray and added some popsicle sticks and froze these I ended up doing like another batch later on and stored them in a recycled ice cream container and then during the party whenever I felt like maybe the kids wanted something else to do I brought these out and they just kind of colored on our little patio I just can't let you go Lord knows that I've tried to You said I was the only one No one likes being like to You made this mess and left me with the pieces Moving on, uh, we have some troll art. So in the movie Frozen, we have these stones that like become trolls or the trolls look like stones or whatever. So I had some rocks on hand from Dollar Tree. I had some little Dollar Tree pens on hand. So I thought I would just pour these rocks in a little frozen basket that I picked up from Dollar Tree. Can you tell I love DT? <laughs> and, you know, made some sample trolls myself uh, to inspire anyone else and just let this be on the table. Now, some people just decorated rocks, you know, non trolly and that was totally fine. But people seem to enjoy this little activity. Next up, we have snowman shooters. So ideally you wanna use a white paper cup for this because styrofoam is a little bit weak, but the styrofoam worked. Um, you just have to be very careful when you're putting this little balloon on top of the cups. And so um, you cut out the bottom of the little cup, you tie the balloon in a knot and then you cut off like the other opposite end of the balloon and put it on like a beanie on the little cup and then you can decorate it and make it look like a little snowman. And then what you're gonna see is me um, put like a little fluff ball that I got from one of my decorations that you'll see me prepare in a later video. Um, you put that in there, pull the balloon back and it shoots your little snowball out of the cup, which is really fun. I did make little instructions with like pictures where I got the inspiration offline and I ended up laminating this and leaving it with the stations. I have a laminator, I'm like very teacher vibes, so I just, I felt like being extra and laminating this. Also to make sure that it doesn't like fly away, get ripped, that way people actually have the instructions and they will last throughout the party. I did laminate some other things while I was at it, like my menu and activities and games, and I left these on the table so that people could see what was available for food and what was available throughout the day or what to expect when we were gonna play games as a group. Moving on, we have sensory snow. Now there are a bunch of recipes online for making your own fake snow, but this was probably one of the most popular and one of the most realistic feeling in my opinion. So you just use shaving cream and baking soda. I got these big things of shaving cream at Dollar Tree and I didn't end up needing all of them. I think I only needed like 
two or three for these three big boxes of baking soda. So you just mix them until you get a consistency that you like. If you feel like your little fake snow is too wet, you can add some more baking soda and then just continue to mix it in. I did prepare this at least one day in advance and I did a test run like a week or two before just to make sure that the consistency would stay the same like over the course of a day. So I did make this the day before and just stored it in some containers to be put out then during the party. So I was making a lot of this fake snow and my plan was to kind of use it for cleaning after the party since it is mostly baking soda. I did pour this in this little table, made a little snowman as decoration to get started. And then what I decided to do, be warned, this was a horrible idea. I poured water and then I put like big floating chunks of ice in there because I was like, oh, you know, Kristoff likes to, you know, get the ice out of the water. And I figured the kids would rinse their hands like you see them doing here. I thought it would work out well. Well, Aubrey had the great idea of pouring like all this water into the snow and it just created this huge slush. And the kids were having a blast, but it was a total mess, total disaster. Uh, I would not put those two next to each other again if I were to do it, but the snow was a hit but it just didn't last very long. So moving on, one of the other activities that I had just out on the tables was a design your own snowflake. I used a little template that I found online and then I made like a sheet of instructions with like picture guidelines for the kids to kind of follow if they don't know how to read or don't have an adult helping them. And um, I did notice that some people were making their own snowflakes, but it didn't seem to be super popular among my crowd. But those are the activities that were kind of throughout the party. You could do whenever, if you could not do it if you don't want, whatever. Moving on, we're doing the games. So I didn't film these things during the party because my family you know, likes their privacy, but we did do a snowball scoop. So that is where you are blindfolded and in a minute you try to scoop as many cotton balls into your bowl as possible. Next up we had what I considered like the big game that would be for the adults. It was matching snowflakes with their templates. And I did have a tiebreaker made out in case, you know, people just came up to me at the same exact time with the right answers. We didn't end up actually needing to use this tiebreaker, but I did use it just as like an extra activity for anyone who was interested in trying their best to to create the template for the given snowflake. And to reduce my level of stress during the party so that I didn't have to remember all of the answers, I did print out an answer key for my reference. We also played Pin the Nose on Olaf, which was fun. So this was my cheapo version of black vinyl. So if you are a cricketer, and you are gonna be using a design for like a day and you don't want to use your expensive black vinyl, you can use wood grain contact paper from Dollar Tree and then just color the cutout with Sharpie and it looks pretty much like black vinyl. <laughs> so that is what I did. I cut out Olaf and then I made like a million of his little carrot noses, all of the same size. They fit perfectly into the nose of the design. And then I assembled the little pin the nose on Olaf like poster board. Now I had all of this stuff on hand. My whole goal for this party was to try to create as much as I can with the stuff I have on hand and not spend like a ridiculous amount of money on decorations, on activities and whatever.
Now, obviously, if you don't have a Cricut, you could easily try to draw this by hand. It may not look perfect and that's okay. I, you know, have a Cricut, so I figured I might as well use it. I did try sketching out Olaf on Aubrey's little like birthday present and it wasn't perfect. It wasn't like, you know, to my liking. So that is why I went ahead with the Cricut. You can see I cut out the pin the nose on Olaf using the wood grain and it does like look different from the Sharpie covered one. And you really can't tell that I didn't use black vinyl to cut out Olaf. So I'm really happy with this technique. I think I'm gonna be using it again in the future if I, you know, am only gonna be using vinyl for like a short amount of time. Anyways, moving on, uh, we're gonna play with, do you wanna build a snowman? Everyone, all the kids, anyone who wanted to participate was given three marshmallows and asked to stack them using only their mouth um, like a snowman and the first person to do it won. So at the beginning of this video, I mentioned there's a surprise. On the screen here is the first part of an Amazon gift card code. The next and last part of the code will be in my next video where I talk about all things decorations for the party. So make sure you guys hit that notification bell so that you are like the first one to log in and see that video when it goes live. This gift card is really just a way to say thank you to you guys. I know that only one person is really gonna be getting this gift card and if I could give one to everyone, I would. I appreciate you guys so much much and it just means the world that you come and watch my videos and support my channel and you know give me thumbs up and words of affirmation in the comments it really you know warms my heart and means so much to me so thank you and congratulations to whoever is the first person to claim this card again the second half of the code will be in my next video so make sure you write this down and stay tuned for that one to go live So let's go ahead and talk about the prizes. Um, I had some of these on hand and then some I picked up from the Dollar Tree. I really liked the little pencils that like, you know, when you run out of the lead on one, you stick it on the next. That was really cute. I went with freeze dried strawberries for a reason. And for the grand prize that I thought, oh, maybe an adult would like this prize. I made this little like yarn kind of Christmas tree artwork and it was you know pretty easy I used almost all Dollar Tree supplies except for the paint I had that on hand from Walmart from like a couple of years ago so that was the one thing I didn't get from Dollar Tree but you could essentially replicate this little piece of artwork for yourself especially with you know the holidays eventually coming up I'm sure some Christmas stuff is already in stores now so it's yeah you know, it's not too soon but it was really easy you just kind of wrap the yarn around your fingers like a bunch of times and and then you take another piece of yarn and tie off like kind of in the middle of your loops and then trim one of the little edges to make it like kind of fringy. Then uh, I made a bunch of those and glued them on my canvas. It was looking a little, you know, raggedy. So I did take some scissors to kind of, you know, trim the tree and just make it look a little bit more aesthetically pleasing but it was really simple to do. And uh, this ended up being one of the prizes for the game where you have to match the snowflake with its template because that was the one game that I kind of envisioned the adults playing as well. The center of my tree was looking a little bare, so I did make one more little tiny fringy loop thing and glued it in there, and I really like how this ended up turning up. I think I might make more just for decoration around my house. Moving on, we have the goodie bags. I just tried, you know, it's kind of convenient that Aubrey's birthday is before Halloween because you get those like candy sales. I did get some little chapsticks, uh, like Frappuccino style or soda style for the guys. And the Jolly Ranchers I originally bought mainly for my cake. So I separated out the blues and purples and everything that was left was gonna go in the goodie bags. 
I tried my best to make sure every goodie bag had the exact same candy. Not everyone got the same flavored Otter Pop, but you know, I figured that would be okay. And then Aubrey really wanted her own little chapstick. So she picked the strawberry one and she has kept it in her room, uh, kind of more as a toy rather than a chapstick. <laughs> So we did have a lot of candy left over. So I made this into a coronation chocolate for our food video you guys saw. And any of the kind of remaining goodie bags, I figured we're gonna give them away to our very first trick-or-treaters as a way to say like, hey, thanks for being our very first trick-or-treaters in this house. So I'm looking forward to doing that for Halloween. But we have, you know, all the goodie bags just kind of out on the table and using this little sign that I got from Dollar Tree a long time ago, just kind of said, you know, thanks so much and um, put some other decorations there. So again, speaking of decorations, that will be my next video. We're gonna do a whole bunch. I, I'm really looking forward to sharing with you guys all that I did. I really put in a lot of effort and I think it was because Juan was on paternity leave. So that's why I got so much done. But make sure you guys stay tuned for that video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you guys are new. I would love to have you stick around and I will catch you guys in the next okay, one. Welcome to the third and final installment of my Frozen themed birthday party prep video series. For those of you guys who are new here, hello, my name is Emily. I am the mother of two little kids, Aubrey, who just turned four, and little baby Jack, who is almost nine months. I make videos on kind of all things mom here on my channel, and in this video, we are covering the decorations that I made for my daughter's fourth birthday party. So let's get to it. So let's go ahead and get started by using some chalk paint pens to do some decorating around the house. I was kind of inspired by our many trips to Starbucks, how they use like chalk paint to kind of decorate the little window separating you from the bar. And I figured I would draw some snowflakes on our sliding glass door. I made some really big elaborate ones kind of inspired from different pictures I saw online. Then I made just kind of little like, you know, five stem stars or six stem stars and drew some dots around the rest of the door. I also let Aubrey give it a go and she just kind of focused on two little areas on our door. So I was just going to leave it like this with the snowflakes, but then I had an idea to use my pin the nose on Olaf little decoration and I traced Olaf on the other side of the glass, which was kind of difficult because it was so thick. But anyways, I used um, my whiteboard markers that I had on hand, an orange chalk paint pen, and my white one to just kind of trace him out. Then I obviously took the pin the nose on Olaf, you know, sign off the door and left it like that. And I really liked how it added the frozen touch to my decoration. Moving on, we are going to be making a bathroom sign. This is my favorite line from the movie. It's when Anna is singing, don't know if I'm elated or gassy, but I'm somewhere in that zone. And I thought that this would be the perfect way to identify the bathroom door in our house. So I moved like a little wreath that I had. Just I wanted it to be, I don't know, prettier than just the sign and hung it on the wreath on our bathroom door.
Next step, we are using the same chalk paint pen to write on our bathroom mirror another quote that I felt was fitting for the bathroom. Let it go, let it go, can't hold it back anymore. <laughs> I, I'm really proud of these two quotes because I was like, you know, inspired by a lot of things online, but this is something I came up on my own. And of course it has to be, you know, bathroom related, but anyways, I thought it was funny. Other people thought it was funny. I drew some snowflakes on the mirror as well and just kind of decorated the bathroom that way. You know, it just added that extra little frozen theme touch to the bathroom and, you know, brought some humor to people's days as well. All right, so enough with the chalk paint pen. We are now going to be doing some little crafts. I wanted to kind of create this abstract looking tree using Mod Podge and white yarn and this thing, this foam thing that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. I think I probably could have done a much better job with this tree, but I wasn't gonna invest as much time into this <laughs> as it probably needed to be, uh, just because I had so much other stuff going on. But I wrapped the foam thing from Dollar Tree with Saran Wrap, then decked out the yarn with kind of glue and wanted it to kind of hold its shape. It worked, it wasn't the best thing. And then I decided to use the foam little cone from Dollar Tree and I decided just to hot glue a bunch of yarn on there, either just the basic yarn or I braided the yarn and tried to make an abstract looking decoration tree thing. It ended up working out and I used these to decorate the bathroom. I did end up spraying this tree with some like spray glue from the Dollar Tree. I think it kind of gave a little bit of a textured look and I wanted just to hold all of the yarn, you know, in its place. So that's what I used. Again, these weren't like my favorite crafts, but they kind of added to the frozen theme in the bathroom. Let's move on to my glass board art. So this is something that I'd like to do every party is decorate my glass board. And I was originally planning on like projecting the image of Anna or Elsa up and just kind of tracing it out or shining a light through like a cutout printout thing. And then I just figured, you know what? I'm just gonna use my Cricut. I have a Cricut, might as well use it. If you don't have a Cricut and you have a whiteboard you want to decorate, you can always use those ideas to like project an image and trace it out to create something that maybe looks better than what you could just do just freehand. So anyways, I went super cheap on this party and used Dollar Tree wood grain vinyl to cut out these images, but I didn't want them to look like wood on the glass board. So I colored over them using Sharpie because I didn't want to waste the money using my nice black vinyl. And I actually prefer this method <laughs> when I'm doing something that is just gonna be used once and then like trashed after the fact. It actually ended up looking like I drew on these images onto my glass board because of the Sharpie, you know, coloring over the wood grain. So it made it look like I did more work than I actually did. <laughs> so there was an added benefit to make it look a little bit more hand-drawn, but that wasn't really what I was going for. Sometimes I'm selfish, get jealous. I feel a little helpless. My whole has shifted again. You made a promise, I kept it. No. I did end up rewriting the word birthday because I noticed it was a little bit like shorter at the beginning and got taller. So I did end up editing this. You may notice a slight difference when the party is all set up. But anyways, I did this a number of days before the party to reduce my stress and I just admired it <laughs> in those days leading up to the party. It was just one of my favorite decorations. Hey! 
Next up, we are making a curly willow table skirt out of plastic table covers from either the Dollar Tree or Walmart. I think Walmart now is a better deal than Dollar Tree since they raise their prices. So the first thing you wanna do is unwrap your table cover and don't unwrap it all the way, just unwrap it like immediately from the package lengthwise. And you're gonna cut squares about two fold lengths long. And pretty much this should come out like an even amount of squares. Like there shouldn't be like half of a square left over. Once you get to the end of the table cover, you should be like a square's worth. So you go ahead and, and cut those out into like a very large, as large of a circle as possible. I kind of did a squircle, square circle. It really doesn't matter. So just cut a squircle if you want. And then you're gonna cut a spiral from the outside all the way to the center of the square. Um, or your squircle, I mean. And I would suggest doing um, like a spiral that's two inches thick. And I say this because the first one that I did was like an inch thick and it was super long. One piece was like four table heights long. <laughs> Um, and so gluing it onto my table tape later on was a little bit more tedious and they were very thin ruffles. So you want thicker ruffles. So I would suggest doing like a two inch thick spiral. Next up, I covered my table in, I think it's a six foot table with a plastic table cover and used tape to tape along the perimeter of the table or like the side of the table. And on this tape is where we're gonna be gluing our little ruffles. Now I put the tape here because I thought that the hot glue would probably melt the plastic table cover that I put on the table. So the um, tape is kind of serving as a you know, heat barrier there. And you just glue on the ruffles. I did white and blue, so I alternated. And then I also had to alternate like the sizes. I didn't want all the skinny, tiny ruffles on one side and you know, whatever. So with the two inch thick spirals ruffles that you cut out, I still had to fold them in half and glued like the halfway point to the tape on my table. But that gave it kind of even more ruffles um, and even more ruffly look. And at the beginning, I was gluing them pretty close together because I this was the first time I've ever done this, and I actually ran out of blue table covers. So you really don't need to glue them that closely together on the tape. You can kind of space them out even more, and I think four table covers would be enough to cover the three sides of the table. But because I was, you know, started off a little too close together, I did run out of blue and I had to break into one more table cover to finish off the sides of the table. Next up, we are assembling our balloon arch. I bought a pack off Amazon for the balloons and I already had the little arch kit on hand from previous parties. I like to first lay out all of the balloons that I have, organize them by size, and then one thing that I do like to do while I'm assembling balloon arches is if there's any small balloons, I blow them up first, put them in a bag, save them for later. These are the ones that I'm going to stick on with like little double-sided stickers that come with the balloons. And then once those are kind of bagged and put away, kind of create my groups of four that are gonna go together on my balloon arch and try to kind of, if I'm doing like a random look, I try to order them in a random way so that I don't have to really think about it later on and I'm not blowing up all the balloons and then trying to find like one random balloon floating around the room. Here I can blow up four, assemble it, put it on the pole, and then do the next four and it just makes it a whole lot easier on me. But this is my little technique for assembling a balloon arch.
Next up, we have this Anna and Elsa balloon and banner. I picked it up at Walmart when I was doing some grocery shopping and thought it would work well above our kitchen sink. Hanging the balloon was a little difficult. These pieces of tape were not quite good enough to hold up the thing, so I used some like very thin string and looped it around the snowflake and then taped it to our cabinets. So next up, we have these paper like origami Christmas trees that I made. I made a lot of these and I will be putting like a full walkthrough tutorial on my crafting channel if any of you guys want to replicate this. I tried my best and then I realized, oh, I did the walkthrough with like white paper, but I think you can still kind of follow along. So that will be posted on my crafting channel if you you know, really want to replicate this tree and can't seem to follow what I'm doing on the screen here. But I made a lot of these and it was tedious work, but I really think it added an extra special touch to my table decorations. I did some uh, green ones and like white ones and had those on my island where I kept all the food. And then at the dessert table and like treat table, that was kind of more purple and blue themed. So I did some purple and blue Christmas trees as well. So if you watched my previous video, you saw um, that there was like almost a full Amazon gift card code. And here is the last little bit that you guys need. Again, this is just to say thank you to you guys for supporting and watching my channel. Obviously, I can't give a card to everyone. So this is just whoever claims it first gets it. But just know that I would really love to just thank you guys and give everyone one if I could. Um, you guys really mean a lot to me. I love the community that's like following what I'm doing and you guys just are the best. Um, I really appreciate you. So again, this is just kind of whoever claims it first. Congratulations. Let me know down below in the comments if you are the lucky person that the code worked for. But if not, I invite you guys to make sure you guys are subscribed with notifications on and that way you won't miss any of my videos where I might do this again soon. I can play the game but I'm falling again. No, don't hold back. Take it far. Promise you the same. Let the pleasure begin. How about you come in close so we can do my place? Maybe we can try. Beating up by seven. You'll be saying, oh, I well, so it's guaranteed. I'll be forever thinking about you and me. So a couple days before the party, I actually took out like all of the serveware that I envisioned using for the party and put it on my island. I even took like a panoramic photo so that I would know where everything went. Like I really wanted to save like time and my sanity the day of the party. So here I was able to kind of like practice or kind of see where everything fit. And then that way the day of the party, I could assemble everything really quickly and referred to my picture and it just, you know, worked really nicely. But you can also see like I even prepped where I thought the trees would work best as well. So next up, we are going to be making a variety of paper snowflakes just using basic copy paper. And hopefully you guys will be able to kind of follow what I'm doing on the screen. I'm cutting a square. So this is an eight and a half by eight and a half inch square, folding it diagonally and then folding it uh, in half from there. I'm showing you guys kind of how I'm holding this as I cut slices 
but not all the way. So like I'm cutting it down and leaving about like a half an inch thick and then creating like another cut here so that when we open it up, we have, you know, this whole thing still attached, but it has little slices. And we're gonna tape alternating pieces together in one direction and then the remaining pieces in the other direction. So here I'm taping like the center piece together and then the outermost piece together, just kind of at like the very tip of the little pieces of paper. And then the center piece, I'm gonna tape on the other side so that it creates this kind of cool looking part of a snowflake. And we're gonna repeat this process a number of times until we have three of these completed to make one half of the snowflake and then do it again to create the second half. So once you have those three pieces, you staple the tips together, make sure that the pieces are all kind of facing in the same direction. And then as you guys can see on the screen, I just taped the individual pieces together as well. I repeated the process, made the second half of the snowflake, and then taped the pieces of the snowflake together from the first half to the second half. This was a very sturdy paper snowflake. The next one I'm going to be making is not as sturdy and much more flimsy. So when I did display it, I had to use slightly more tape to make it look nice. So as you guys can see, I folded my uh, square that I cut in half diagonally and I'm cutting one inch thick um, strips all the way down, but leaving about a half an inch. And here again, I'm gonna be taping together um, every other piece in one direction, and then I'm gonna flip it around and tape again every other piece together in the other direction to create my like one sixth of my snowflake. We're gonna repeat the process three times, secure it by staples, and use some tape to kind of hold the pieces a little bit better together. So as I mentioned in my last video, my goal for this party regarding the party prep was to try to not spend too much money. There were some things that I did buy that were frozen themed that I just really either didn't have the time or the creativity to make myself, uh, but I really wanted to do things that you know, used items that I had on hand and copy paper is definitely something that most of us have on hand. This was a very elaborate decoration and it really didn't cost that much or really take that much time. If there isn't a channel already out there called Bougie on a Budget, I feel like that could be the title of a new channel that I could create because I'm just trying my best to go all out for this party but still not, you know, spend an arm and a leg. So with the more sturdy snowflakes, the first ones that I made, I am taping one of the tips of the snowflakes with tape, cutting a little hole and tying a string to it and then suspending it from where we hope to eventually have pendant lights. So it was kind of nice to have like that pendant light feel <laughs> before we actually get them to see like what it would feel like in our house. And I did have my Cricut cut out some other more elaborate snowflakes and I taped those to the string. And then I'm also going to be hanging these guys from our lights that line our hallway.
So I really liked hanging these from the hallway because we had some people like family that hadn't been to our house yet. And if they were asking where the restroom was, I was like, just follow the snowflakes. <laughs> so they knew to keep following these snowflakes down our hall. And then I hung a big one outside the bathroom. And then the bathroom again um, had the gassy or elated <laughs> sign. And you know, it was easy for them to find our restroom. With the other remaining big snowflakes that I made, we taped them to our window on the outside of our house under the patio cover. And again, we had to use slightly more tape with the more flimsy snowflakes, but I do still think that it turned out really nice. Next up, we are making some little fake snowballs. So I had this yarn on hand. I think I got it from Dollar Tree a long time ago. So I love me some Dollar Tree. And they already had these little fluff balls like on them. So I decided to cut those off and those were used for our snowman shooters, if you guys watched my previous video. And then with the remaining like really soft fluffy yarn, I made some snowballs. So you just wrap it like around either your fingers or I used cardboard. Uh, like tons of times using a string you want to tie in the center so that you create like two bundles of loops and then you're gonna cut each and every loop and fluff up the ball if you don't like how it looks you can trim it down I am trying to make it as spherical as possible and I just repeated this process a ton of times I ended up using these for just table decorations, I believe just on our dessert table, but you could also use them for the snowman shooters. You could just have the kids play with them. If you have like a baby or a toddler and you don't want them to play with other sensory items, but um, I just really like how they turned out. I think they turned out really cute. As you guys saw in my last video, I did print out like menus and activities, papers and laminated stuff, but I wanted just to display the menu using this little Dollar Tree photo frame. And I thought this was a lot easier than trying to label each and every food and show how it fit the theme. I just thought it was nice to include all the pictures of the little characters and then the title of the food and then what it actually was like. You know, I put Elsa's flurries and then it was like labeled Otter Pops underneath. I did use this one Christmas tree prize that I made in my last video as decoration throughout the party until it was time to give it away. So that was, you know, an extra little added touch to our party. And then with the little strips of white paper from our snowflakes, I decided just to make like a basic like chain link looking decoration and I kind of did this one because I didn't want to waste the paper but two I was like they kind of look like snowballs so I just taped them up in our backyard the day of the party I could have done a better job at hiding the tape but at that point I just I don't think I cared we did use blue and purple streamers that I bought from the store to decorate the posts my friend uh, did this for me so I'm really grateful and we decorated the tables with like a spiral looking thing with the streamers as well so for my island I did take out like a big thing of paper to just kind of protect the island to protect the quartz but also make it easier for cleanup like once <laughs> Once everything is off of there, I can just roll it up and throw it away. So this was the night before I was getting everything ready. I put the trees out. I put the little hole punch snowflakes that you guys saw. And I even broke out some greenery and placed it like under the bowls. And I really like how that like added to the table. I also used some like pine cones. So I just added like as much Christmassy stuff as I could. And then you guys can see our kind of purple and blue themed table as well. So 
So this was the day of the party with all of the food out, my cupcakes that I made, the cake that I made. You guys can catch those videos if you want to check out my food video. I do want to mention like one thing I was I felt kind of bad about was because I was doing so much ahead of time, I felt bad that I was missing out on Aubrey like being totally surprised the morning of her birthday party by all these decorations. I know that some people stay up really late the night before and try to do everything all at once so that the next morning they can see their little one's reaction. And I knew that there was no way I could pull this all off in a night. So I decided to, you know, suck up those feelings and start two weeks ahead of time. And what I learned was that in some ways it was even better because every time I created something new, Aubrey got to savor and enjoy and react to that one thing rather than be overwhelmed. And it was so nice to be able to see her get excited about the willow curly table cover thing that I made. And then the balloon art she got to help out with and see how beautiful it ended up being. And, you know, whatever other decorations, once it was up and she woke up in the morning, she got to see them and was excited about that. So it wasn't just one big reveal where she might be overwhelmed. She got to have that type of reaction multiple times in the weeks leading up to her party. So it made me not feel so bad about not giving her that one big regular house to full-on party elaborate house. In some ways, I kind of like it better. So if that encourages any of you guys to party prep ahead of time, I really suggest doing it. It makes it less stressful on you and your little one gets to be more and more excited about their party and give you those moments of like excitement and their reaction many times leading up to the party. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Comment down below what your favorite decoration was and subscribe if you guys are new. I would love to have you stick around and I will catch you guys in the next one. Hey there, welcome back to Lima Bean Living. In today's video, we are party prepping for my aunt's birthday party. I offered to host her party at my house and I thought I would do kind of like a Halloween theme and kind of combine the two. So we're doing a Halloween birthday party themed party <laughs> and we're starting off by just kind of putting some Halloween decorations out we did this kind of a couple weeks before the party just because it was going to be October anyways and I wanted to show you guys what we have these little cans that are painted my mom gave us she had these at her house and had some extras and so she thought we would enjoy them you could also fill them with flowers we just kind of left them as is then I'm putting out this little skeleton that we've had since we lived in Texas we got it at Target I believe and they're just like all separate little stakes that you put in the ground and I don't know we thought it was funny Juan really likes it so that little skeleton I don't know we, we don't have a name for him Maybe you guys can give your ideas in the comments, but he is our main Halloween decoration in addition to a few other little things and some Halloween Christmas lights as well, which Juan put up very nicely on the front of our house. Okay, next we're decorating the inside of our house. I got these little like ghost witches things from Dollar Tree a couple years ago, and I think that they still sell them. And then we also got these witches hats that I got also from Dollar Tree. And what I'm doing is I'm just attaching a string to a button, and we're gonna be threading this through the hat so that the button rests on the inside of the hat, and gonna be hanging these above our island where we hope to eventually get pendant lights, but in the meantime, decorations will work just fine and I like this technique just because if I just had tied a string I think the knot probably would have like come through the hole that I had to poke and the button just kind of makes sure that like you know it's not going to be falling off anytime soon. I really like also that like you can't really see the string so it just looks like they're floating above the island 
That was one of my favorite little decorations. If you guys watched my frozen party prep, I hung snowflakes, so I kind of hope to continue this until we eventually get lights and maybe I'll hang other decorations somewhere else. But moving on, I've seen a lot of you know people out there hang little bats around their house and instead of buying my own, I figured I'd use the supplies that I had. So I only had one sheet of black uh, like cardstock, and so I had to use brown. But I think that this worked out. It kind of gave the look kind of more variety. So I cut out a bunch of bats, and unfortunately, the Cricut like didn't cut all the way through the cardstock, and it made it really hard to weed out the parts that weren't supposed to be there. But I didn't stress over it because our walls are like the kind of the same kind of white as the paper that is exposed. I was just like, you know what? No one's gonna be studying these like in detail in person. So as you can see, I'm not really getting all the paper off as I'm weeding, but you really can't tell when you're looking at these bats on my wall. So it's really not a big deal. But anyways, I cut out a bunch of bats and then we're gonna be attaching them to our little like hallway wall as you walk in like through the front door. And the way that I did this was in order to like not screw up our paint, I'm using painter's tape and then some of these like little round stickers that you often use for like a balloon arch. So I'm attaching the little round stickers to the bats first and then putting like the piece of blue painter's tape on top of it with the sticky side up so that I can then attach this to the the wall and nothing's going to be ruined. Now I could have just used the, you know, blue painter's tape and made it like a, a loop, you know, where you fold it on itself, but I didn't want these bats to like maybe be sticking off too much. Or sometimes when you do that loop technique, they fall off. So I really just wanted to avoid all of that and have them kind of be more flush with the wall. And I bent out the wings a little bit too, to kind of give it a little bit more dimension. Next, we're just adding some little, very minimal decorations to the bathroom. I had some of these pumpkins from the Dollar Tree and the Hello Fall signs from the Dollar Tree. As you guys know, I love me some Dollar Tree. I'm not loving the price hike, but you know, what can you do? Uh, anyways, so one thing that I do really want to continue is doing my like chalk pen art in the bathroom and on our sliding glass door. So I will be adding some just little decorations in the bathroom. I thought a spider web would be cute, some pumpkins, and then a little tombstone. Although I didn't want it to get like too morbid since we're doing a birthday party, but I thought that, you know, this looked kind of cute in the bathroom. So for the sliding glass door, I thought I would do a similar decoration with the little spider web up in the corner, but I wanted to do like ghosts flying on through the door and like having them just kind of float by, I guess. And I had these little, I don't know what they're really called. They're like wire decorations. You'll see them in a bit, but that's how I got the inspiration of how to draw these ghosts. There's so many different ways you can draw ghosts, but I really liked how cute these ones looked. So I just did a variety and then Aubrey wanted to help me and then she kind of decided not to help me, but I used her height as a reference and I drew like a life-size mummy with a little opening for the eye holes. And my idea behind this was that you could have like the kids stand on one side of the door and then you could take a picture and like you could see their little eyes popping through. We'll see Aubrey take a picture or cameo little moment in a second. But I really like just like the idea of kind of using the door as like a photo op as well. So 
So later that evening, I wasn't totally feeling how I did the mummy. I, I know that it, you know, one doesn't look realistic anyways, but I kind of felt like it looked too blobby. So I kind of erased some arms or hands and, you know, just kind of modified it a little bit. And then on my other door, I decided just to draw some more ghosts. And then I drew like a little Frankenstein photo op character as well as like a little cat. And I really like the way that they all turned out. So we're moving on to the glass board now. I wanted to document Aubrey's little decorations. She drew our family, um, if you could tell, those are our family members. And then she stuck on a bunch of little pieces of the confetti things from the wire decorations I told you about. Um, she was decorating, so I had to at least document that before I erased it all. And then since we're doing a Halloween birthday party, I thought it would be cute to say happy booth day. I don't know. I've never seen this done before. I don't know if it's, you know, worth copying or not, but I altered the boo so many times because I just wasn't happy with like how it looked, but the final product, you know, was good enough for me. It took me a little while to get there, but you know, I was um, satisfied with how it turned out. Okay, so moving on, we're gonna be doing another DIY uh, willow table skirt using Dollar Tree table covers, so the plastic ones. And so the first thing that I'm doing is just covering our six foot table with just a table cover. And along the edges of the table, I'm putting some blue tape because this is where we're gonna be gluing our like spirally table cover cutouts. <laughs> So to make this, if you guys didn't catch my frozen party, I did one for this too, um, or if you just forgot how I made them in that last video. So we're gonna take our table covers out of the plastic wrapper and not unfold it all the way, just kind of unfold it like the first way lengthwise, and we're gonna cut a bunch of squares. Next, we are going to trim around the like perimeter of the square, just kind of maybe making like a squircle, a square circle. And then once you have this, we're gonna create a spiral from the outside all the way to the center of this squircle table cover. And I would suggest making this about one and a half to two inches thick in your spiral. Anything like smaller in thickness will create a super long spirally, you know, table decoration thing. And anything thicker might just kind of either look weird or it might end up being too short. So I found that one and a half to two inches thick is kind of the, the area that you should shoot for. So this is what the table cover looks like when it's totally prepared. I'm gonna do this again three more times. I used a total of four table covers to create all the ruffles and then a fifth one to cover the actual table. And for this party, I figured orange and black would be appropriate colors for this table decoration. Uh, but for my like daughter's frozen party, we did white and blue. You could do like a rainbow one, you could do pink and red. But really the options are endless for this. So once you have all of the spirals cut out, you want to separate each strand that doing the cuts created. 
and we're going to be gluing these to the tape that we taped around our table perimeter. And what I did was, because I did about two inch thick strands, they weren't quite long enough for me to fold it in the middle and glue the middle to the tape. I did offset it a little bit so that the little willowy strands would almost reach the floor, at least one side, and then the other side ended up a little bit taller off the ground. But you really can't tell, so I really like how it turned out. It kind of gave it like a layered effect. And we're just gonna glue these all the way around the table like I said, I did four table covers for these decorations and it almost finished off the three sides of the table that were exposed. At the very end, I just kind of taped on the scraps of the table covers that were left over. But as you guys can see, the finished product looks really nice. I really like how it turned out. And then I got moving on to our little balloon arch that I did with some Dollar Tree balloons. So my idea behind this balloon arch was trying to copy like a candy corn. So it actually made assembling the balloon arch really easy for me because I could just blow up all the same color get the you know colors grouped together and then assembled the balloon arch very quickly doing the chunky kind of balloon arches like colored colorful chunks all over is really easy rather than like buying a pack from amazon with like tons of different sizes and colors and then trying to make it look nice and having it be like assorted so this was a lot quicker to set up but i can't say that i really like how it ended up my idea in my head I thought was good but the final results I kind of don't think it totally gave a candy corn vibe to my guests my mom suggested actually doing like had I done yellow on both ends then orange and then white at the very top it might have resembled a candy corn a little bit better but moving on, anyways, we are outside. It's like, I think the day before the party and I'm using those little wire decoration things that, I'm, that I talked previously about. And I got these from the Dollar Tree a couple years ago. I made like a little wreath with what with them and these were just kind of what was left over. They had skulls, bats, ghosts, spiders, and pumpkins. And I just kind of like did them around the post on our patio cover. So normally for like Aubrey's parties, I try to have lots of activities planned or things like that. And here I just wanted to keep it simple. I picked up two little crafts from the Dollar Tree. Um, I've actually had these on hand for like a while. I got them a while ago. So hopefully the stores still have them if you are doing a last minute party. But they were just cute little finger puppets and then like making little foam Halloween owls. And then I picked up some of these objects for you could do like prizes this is my prize section because we're going to be playing just one game for this party or these would make really cute uh, little like goodie bags or gift bags um, or gift coffins I guess <laughs> but they're these little coffins they came in a two pack and I'm filling them with just some candy for like prizes for the game that we're going to play and then Dollar Tree also was selling these cute book boxes and I just picked up one, but they had a couple different like varieties of books. You could use them as decoration around your house, but I thought it would make a cute little gift basket as well.
so here I'm just kind of preparing an activity and a game for the you know actual party and I'm using some little like autumn craft paper that my mom had given me a couple years ago and I just never really figured out how I was going to use it but I thought what would be really cute is to make like a memory game. I know that Aubrey and some of her cousins are kind of at that age where you like playing like the memory games, flipping over the cards and seeing if you can match, you know, the different styles of cards. And so I just cut up the craft paper into like little three inch squares. And then because I didn't want you to see like the back like from the back side, you, I didn't want you to see the pattern. I cut up some other cardstock and glued those together and then laminated them because, you know, I, I like my laminator. I like to use it whenever I can because I'm extra like that. But anyways, I laminated the pieces. Plus, I, can, I guess I need to give myself a break. This is going to be long lasting. We can use these again in the future. But anyways, <laughs> since these are going to last us a while, I laminated these, cut off the excess lamination, and made the little memory game. And then with the remaining little squares, I decided to make like a tic-tac-toe board. And I placed these squares as like, you know, instead of drawing the lines of tic-tac-toe, these squares kind of make the tic-tac-toe game itself. And we're going to be playing tic-tac-toe, but with candy corn and candy pumpkins. So the game that we did was like doing a flip cup, um, two teams. If in order to place your pumpkin or your candy corn on the tic-tac-toe board, you have to flip a cup with red water inside, like blood, until it stands up on its own, and then you can place your piece. And so we just had a fun little game like that, and people won their candy prizes. And overall, I think it was a pretty good game for the age range that we have at our house. Okay, so moving on to the food, I didn't have a lot of Halloween inspired like food items, but I was in charge of like mainly the desserts and then I also wanted to make these little mummy pigs in a blanket. So we're just, you know, getting the little smokies and some crescent roll dough. And then instead of wrapping the entire smoky in the crescent roll, we're gonna be cutting little strips and then wrapping it around to kind of resemble a mummy. Now, were these perfect? No. Did they have to be? No. And did they taste delicious? Yes. So that is really all that matters. I like the look of like the thinner strand ones, but then you don't really get that much of the actual dough. So you can give or take on how you how you want it to look versus how you want it to taste if you like more of the little smoky or less but uh, that was just a really simple way to incorporate the Halloween theme into one of our snacks. Moving on to another snack but more of a treat style we are going to be making some meringue ghosts. I did a test run a while ago shared it on my Instagram and I did like a job of the hut or like a Pac-Man style ghost. And I'm doing some math here because the recipe that I got online, um, it, I didn't have the exact number of grams of egg whites. So thankfully math is my strong suit. I will put the recipe down below in the description box and like how I figured out how much exactly I should use down there. But after you get your sugar and your egg whites together, we're gonna heat them over a double boiler until they reach either 50 degrees Celsius or about 122 degrees Fahrenheit. And this, I guess, is like the Swiss meringue method. And then we are going to beat these until there's like a stiff-like soft peak. <laughs> I can't really tell based on the recipe that I got. It's, it's, it's pretty stiff. I mixed in about a teaspoon of vanilla just to kind of give it some extra flavoring. You could do lemon juice or, you know, some other flavoring. And then we're going to be piping on these little ghosts and using sprinkles as the eyes and mouth. And I'm doing two different styles. Um, I'm also using chocolate chips in some of them because I really wanted like a nice chocolatey center to go with the subtly sweet meringue. Thank you. 
So as you can see, the first two rows of ghosts that I did were pretty much just a meringue. And then the second two rows, I'm putting like four chocolate chips in the center. And I wanted there to be like a chocolatey surprise. And then we're going to be doing my like Pac-Man style ghosts. I'm doing both versions because my family who saw my test run, they kind of were split on which style they liked the best. So I was just like, you know what, I'm just going to do both again. And so these ones are a little bit easier to pipe out. You can kind of make them, you know, how whatever design you want because they are flat. And then I just did three little chocolate chips for the eyes and mouth of the ghosts. And then, like I said, for the, what I'm calling the job of the hut style ghost, I'm just shoving in little like brown sprinkles for the eyes and then the mouth. This step is pretty time consuming, but I do think it gives it like that extra touch that just makes it all the more special because if it was just like a white blob, I don't think it would be super obvious that it's a ghost. And so the sprinkles just, you know, very clearly define that this is a ghost and the little tail makes it so that it doesn't look like a melting snowman. <laughs> and then after all the sprinkles are in, I went back with a like finer tipped piping bag and just piped on some little hands for the ghost as well. I really do like meringue like cookies um, when they're done right and unfortunately these taller ones I don't think I baked them as long as they needed to be because they were kind of more chewy than I was hoping for. The flat cookies I think ended up being perfect and they were completely dried out because you bake them in a very low temperature. I think I did about 175 degrees Fahrenheit for about two hours and then I turned off the oven just let it continue to sit in there so the flat ones because they're you know they weren't super thick they dried out completely but the taller ones I think just needed a little bit more time in the oven moving on in a previous video I prepared the cake and frosting for the birthday cake I'm going to be assembling in this video and I actually froze them so here I'm, you know, I defrosted the buttercream and I'm just beating it up to kind of make it more light and fluffy again after having, you know, been frozen and defrosted and just kind of compacted in its little container. And then while that is fluffing up, I'm making a ganache for like the center of the layers of cake and frosting. And um, this is just, I did about 300 grams of chocolate chips and 200 grams of heavy whipping cream. And then you just melt it in the microwave. And um, if you want it to be like a thicker consistency, just add some more chocolate chips. But it ends up being, in, in my case, it turned out to be like a really fudgy center. And so I really like how it tastes with this combination of flavors. And then we are going to be assembling the cake. I prepared six cake layers, but because of the ganache filling and the frosting itself, a six layer would have been way too tall. And so I ended up only using five of the layers. And then I, with that extra layer of cake and the remaining frosting and ganache, I ended up just assembling a separate layer and giving this to my aunt for her to take home and enjoy at her own pace following her birthday party. Do you wanna be out there? You don't need to be prince charming to me. I just need this to be real. I don't need no fairy tale. You don't need a kill dragon for me. So you might notice that I like remove the cake and then I bring it back. 
I'm actually putting it in the freezer for a few minutes between each layer to make sure that um, as I'm putting on like the new layer of cake, it doesn't squeeze out the ganache and that the buttercream can kind of just like firm up a little bit better. And then once the crumb coat was done, which is pretty much just the fine layer of frosting that goes around the cake, I used the rest of the frosting to do the final coat of around the cake. And I'm really happy with how it turned out, like just the smoothness of it all. Um, it's so interesting to see the, how different the frosting looks with different lighting. Here it looks really black, before it looked kind of gray. Overall, I think it turned out pretty cute. So uh, I wish it was a little bit darker black, but like I said, it turned out fine. And then when I made the frosting in a previous video, I did set aside some of the basic vanilla before I added the cocoa powder so that I could eventually pipe on these little ghosts. So I just did like a blob of frosting and then smeared it out to make it look like it was a flying ghost and used little sprinkles again for just some eyes in this case. I didn't want to put a mouth because I don't know, it, these ghosts were a little bit bigger and I think when I, I think I tried it and it just looked weird. So I just did some eyes and then in some of the extra little space, I just did little smaller ghosts and I didn't put any sprinkles. So like it was their backside or whatever, just to kind of fill it in. And I topped the cake off with four little ghosts flying in a little circle. So I'm really happy with how this cake turned out. Not only does it look cute and obviously fit the theme, but even when it was cut, it looked pretty and it tasted delicious. Everyone really loved the cake and we did have leftovers. So we ended up cutting them up and freezing some slices and I'm actually enjoying one tonight. Right after I record this voiceover, I'm excited to enjoy that little slice. So anyways, here is the cake. You can see like the nice gooey ganache filling. And I did want to make one more kind of Halloween inspired treat in case people didn't want cake because there's some people who don't like cake, but they do like cinnamon rolls. And so I saw this online where you take your cinnamon rolls and unroll the roll. But in my case, I was making it from scratch. So I just never rolled it up in the first place. I just cut out strips and you want to fill a casserole pan so that it kind of looks like intestines. You can kind of wiggle the, the strips of cinnamon roll dough kind of back and forth. I ended up spacing mine out um, a little bit later so that there was more space for the dough to rise. And then you can dye your frosting red so that when it kind of melts on top of the cinnamon rolls, once they're baked, it looks like intestines. Now, mine was kind of a fail, uh, but I made a lot of frosting because I know my family likes frosting, and I think they'd rather me have it not look like intestines and just taste good <laughs> rather than having less frosting. So anyways, that was my attempt at cinnamon bun intestines. Not really a success, but definitely delicious. I do want to wrap up this video by showing you guys one of my niece's creations. She wanted to carve a candy pumpkin and then she wanted to put like a little candle and make it a jack-o-lantern and I thought it was just super adorable and definitely worth sharing with you guys. Anyways, I'd like to thank you guys for watching today's video. If you guys enjoyed it or want to incorporate any of these ideas for your own Halloween party or Halloween birthday party, let me know down below in the comments. Uh, let me know which one is your favorite too as well. I know I threw out a bunch of different decorations or food ideas your way. So if you have a favorite, let me know. 
Don't forget to like this video, and if you guys are new here, I would love for you to stick around and subscribe. I have a whole bunch of other party prep videos that you can check out, a whole playlist of them, and tons of other motherhood content. So I would love to have you stick around, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Hey there, welcome back to Lima Bean Living. In today's video, we are party prepping for Jack's first birthday. Since he isn't going to remember this party, and since we were also planning on celebrating my birthday, I thought I would make it a little easier on myself by reusing a lot of the supplies from Aubrey's construction-themed birthday party from when she turned three. If you want to check out those party prep videos, I will link them up above for your convenience. In the past, I've split up my party prep videos into multiple parts because I usually do a lot, but this time I thought I would put everything in one video, hence the super long video. Let me know down below in the comments which style you prefer, a longer video covering everything or individual videos that cover the food, the activities, and the decorations. So one of the new decorations that I did for this party was my glass board art. Just like for Aubrey's frozen party, I cut out a large image on multiple sheets of wood grain contact paper using my Cricut, and then colored over top using a Sharpie. I could have used black vinyl, but I'm super cheap and didn't want to use a lot of expensive materials for a one-day event. I ended up using an orange whiteboard marker to add some color to the board and smoothed out some of the design with a black marker too. Next up, we are setting up the table under the glass board. Here, I'm using the DIY Willow table skirt that I made for my Halloween party a few months ago. Making one of these takes a bit of time, but I love the final look. 
so I wanted to make sure that I got at least one more use out of it, and since the black and orange fit the color scheme of this party, I figured now was the perfect time to break it out. If you want to see how I made this table skirt using around six plastic table covers, feel free to check out the video I've linked up above. So I've been relatively bad about documenting Jack's milestones, but I have been somewhat consistent with taking his monthly photos. So I decided to make a little decoration displaying Jack's photos to hang outside his bedroom so people could admire them on their way to our restroom. It's hard to find the reason why you stay by my side. I love the way this turned out and hope to make something similar using Aubrey's monthly photos if I ever get around to it. So for this party, I didn't go crazy with activities or games, but I did want to do something. So I thought a little how well do you know Jack game would be fun. Almost all of the answers have been shared on this YouTube channel. So the friends or family members who watch Lima Bean Living shouldn't have had to guess if their memories serve them well. For the prize, I picked up a holiday hot cocoa bomb kit on clearance at Walmart after Christmas, and I thought I would have it fit the theme by passing it as a wrecking ball kit. Everyone seemed to enjoy the game, and it was a good way for me to reflect on Jack's milestones throughout his first year. In addition to this kit, I also purchased a pre-built gingerbread house on clearance. I thought it would make for a fun construction type activity for the kids to do. Most of these holiday kits are good for at least a year, so in my opinion, it's definitely worth picking up at least one after the holidays, whether you are throwing a construction party or just want to have one on hand for the next Christmas season. Next up, we are making the goodie bags for the kids who attended. To easily make the bags fit the theme, I drew lines on them to make them look like a street. To fill the bags, I actually had a lot of construction tattoos and stickers left over from Aubrey's third birthday party. 
so I put these in along with some pullback cars from Walmart and lots of candy. I wasn't sure exactly how many kids would actually end up coming, so I made a lot of bags, but I figured better have more than enough than not enough. You made a promise, I kept it. No. For the balloon arch, I didn't buy any special Amazon balloon kit. I just made sure to pick up some Dollar Tree balloons around Halloween time so that I would have the balloons that fit the color scheme of the party. I made the arch a couple days in advance and saved a few balloons for any last minute fixes or additions. Let me know how you like the final look down below in the comments. I just can't let you go. Lord knows that I've tried to. You said I was the only one No one likes being like to You made this mess and left me with the pieces Now I wanna burn all the bridges between us
To finish off my dessert and treat table, I added some confetti from Jack's gender reveal party. Not only did it match the theme, but it kind of is extra special that we got to reuse this confetti to celebrate Jack's first birthday too. So moving on to the food, we are starting off by prepping some mini traffic lights using small pretzel sticks, white chocolate, and mini M&Ms. For Aubrey's third birthday, I made these with pretzel rods and regular M&Ms, and they weren't too popular, I think because they were just really big. But these smaller snacks definitely were a hit. several times it hurts to admit that we're no different i find it hard to commit but you don't even try still i'm better with and without you oh to me I just need this to be real I don't need no fairy tale you don't need a killer dragon for me
So for the themed cake, I thought I would make a six layered, six inch diameter carrot cake. This is a recipe I've shared a number of times on this channel, so if you want the recipe, feel free to check out the video I've linked up above.
For the exterior, I planned on doing some white and yellow stripes using a cake tool that I was gifted at Christmas and an orange drip. This was my first time making stripes on a cake this way and it definitely didn't go as smoothly as I anticipated, but overall I do like the final look. More importantly though, everyone loved the taste of the cake.
Next up, we are making spare tire brownies using a mini silicone donut mold. I made these for Aubrey's construction party and they were a hit. This time around, they were also gobbled up. I probably should have made two boxes worth, but since I only have one silicone mold in each size, it takes a long time to make them. After baking, I freeze the brownies in their mold to make them easier to remove. Then I scrape off any lingering bits off the mold and bake another tray. One good thing about this treat is that this prep can be done weeks before the party if necessary to save time and the brownies can be stored in the freezer until just before the start of the party. Because they are small, they defrost rather quickly and are definitely delicious. Moving on, we are making a tres leches cake using the recipe I've shared in the past. I decided to make this cake because we were expecting a lot of people at the party and I thought it would be nice to have a choice in the cake. The carrot cake is definitely sweeter, but this cake is a much more refreshing and light cake. A lot of my family has never tried tres leches before, so Jack's party was their first time giving it a try. I got a lot of positive feedback, and some of my family even said that this is their new favorite cake. I made this the day before the party and refrigerated it overnight. The next morning, I made the whipped topping and covered it in raspberries and blueberries. I originally wanted to top it with strawberries, but none of the strawberries at the grocery store looked good. In the end, it really didn't matter. Everyone who tried it loved it. The day before the party, I also cut up the lettuce and stored it in a container filled with water, and I cut up the olives and cooked and seasoned the ground beef for our nacho bar. My plan was to reheat the meat in a crock pot during the party. This ended up being much less stressful than trying to cook all of the meat right before or during the party. Get all the things 
you've been taught, you've been told. Don't blink, don't run, don't turn left or turn right or look straight at the side. My mind's gone in circles, I'm trying to fight it. Get in these voices inside to stay quiet. Go to the place where all this began. Just start again. Finally, we are going to finish setting up for the party and add some final touches.
Last minute, I also whipped up some homemade guacamole. Because I am a wimp, this guac is not spicy at all, but it definitely is delicious and was completely consumed. Everything added is to taste, so I don't have a specific measurement for each ingredient for you, but if I ever get around to figuring out exactly how much I use to get it just right, I will definitely share those measurements with you. For outside decorations, we just use black table covers with some yellow stripes taped on to make the tables look like roads. I had intended on doing some DIY chalk paint street lines all over our backyard walkway, but it was very rainy leading up to the party and I figured that was just God's way of telling me to take it easy. So I cut myself some slack and didn't do that extra decoration. 
Another decoration that I didn't end up doing was my near art in the bathroom. I thought it would have been cute to draw a stop sign and write stop growing up on the mirror, but I thought of that idea last minute and I didn't have enough time to do that on top of everything else that had to be done closer to the party. Nevertheless, I think the party turned out great. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you are new. I'd love to have you stick around and I will catch you guys in the next one. to the end of the video. If you didn't know already, every Monday and Friday, you can find motherhood and lifestyle content on this channel. And since us moms have to do it all, that may mean yummy recipes, easy DIYs, mom hacks, cleaning and organization, or just a combo of everything. Please know that you are loved and you are made for greatness, and I will catch you in the next one.